This is Philip Roy playing the Doctor. And I'm Mandy Rose and I play Jenny. For the Doctor Who fan film, Doctor Who Meets the Scorpion, this is the Type 40 podcast. for Type 40 live materialising right here again with the live stream Doctor Who magazine show across your view screen in real time on YouTube, Rumble and Facebook. Always in front of a live chat full of friends, fans and companions just like you. Yes, spring is here. Well, sort of. Clocks... <laughs> Clocks are about to go forward in time while we look in both directions as ever, tracking the universe both on and off screen here on Type 40 Live. It's our big Easter parade for 2024. I'm Dan Hadley, Birmingham's king of the geeks. And yeah, here we are. We're streaming again. And there you are too. Now, this is the bit where I have to remember to let you know in the Facebook group, in the Type 40 Facebook group, you've got to hit that little blue link. We don't want to not be on first name terms, do we? So if you hit the little blue link, Facebook tells StreamYard and StreamYard tells just us exactly who you are. And we can all get uh, get down to it together, which I know that sounds wrong but I'm just going to style it out anyway. Okay. <laughs> yes, so this is where we sort the chicks from the rabbits as we bring them all in to discuss all things all things Doctor Who. It's been a lively week, particularly around these parts. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed that. We'll touch on that a little later on. Uh, but uh, they're, they're hopping keen to get in and to fill up the console. It's all got a bit pear-shaped. Whoa, hang on. What's going on here? We need. I think we need all hands on deck to sort of sort this out don't we? So who's first? Who's first? Hmm. So identify yourself. We can self-identify, I think, as either uh, bunnies or or chicks. So which do you want to be, Charlotte Shields? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Only the tough questions at Type 40 Live. I, I, I say bunnies because chicks is a bit too American for me. <laughs> it is. It stinks of grease, doesn't it? It's, uh, yes, no, even though I like grease. grease. Grace yeah. the, I mean, Grace the Musical. <laughs> yeah, I'm no Sandy. <laughs> Do, you're no Sandy. <laughs> that's, that's, I won't ask, I won't ask. How's your week been? Good? Good. Well, it, it's good considering that I'm now off for my holidays for two weeks. And mm. I was very ready for it. And so was the kids. <laughs> <laughs> the kids are ready for you to be off. Are the Easter yes. eggs sort of piling up already? Have you got... Well, I got one from work, which was a nice surprise. And I'll just go and grab it now. <laughs> Ooh, well, while you while she's going to get that everybody i'll bring in the next one because it's still it's still all over the place here is this i think we need somebody pretty mega to help us sort it out ian david dears the mega geek is back there he is hello hey, <laughs> the mate you okay uh, yeah i'm all right i'm all right uh yeah yeah it's uh, been a well I, I i've been working really hard so i've been hearing bits and bobs about doctor who so i, I don't really bits know uh, bobs. what's going on yeah and some what's bobs, going on, Bob. Or bobs and bits, whichever and bits. is good. Well, I hope we can fill in some of the gaps for you mm. uh, on this edition of the show. Do some of the heavy lifting for you. Uh, what? So, yeah, Easter's on its way. Ian, do you favour the uh, the chocolate or you more go for the sweeties, which is your preferred option? Um, it's always the chocolate for, for me. I mean, basically, uh, the, well, I've got a huge family and they all bring eggs and it's just, you know, there's just so much left after they leave, so... 
<laughs> yeah, it's, it's chocolate. <laughs> it's chocolate. I'll be eating chocolate for the next two weeks after 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 Sunday. So there you go. It's hide them all over the place. Do you hide the eggs all around the your abode? No, because I live I live in a I live in a flat, so we haven't got a garden. <laughs> It'd be a bit hard. Yeah, yeah, it'd be a bit hard finding stuff. But we do put them all in a big bag, yeah. and all the kids go into the bag and they put their hand in, and whatever one they pick out. Sometimes they end up crying because they pick out one they don't like, and oh, no. they have to swap with them and stuff like that. So yeah, so it's it's all it's oh. all, all fun. Yeah, it's all fun. Oh, the perils, the perils of family life. Uh, mm. Let's uh, yeah. So which would you rather be, Ian, a chick or a bunny? But you didn't think you'd be asked that question, did you? A chick or a bunny? And, uh... I don't know. None, really. <laughs> <laughs> Why Just would anyone want to be a bunny? Yeah. Be Hello. Be, who'd, answer, who'd ask a silly question like that? How about you, Sarah? Which would you be, a, a chick or a bunny? Uh, a chick. <laughs> <laughs> Even though. She'd be a bunny. <laughs> I'm a bunny, question? yes. <laughs> bunny. Oh, Meaning. God. This is, I'm, I'm going to regret this. This is, this is the fez all over again. It's balanced it's, uh, precariously on my headphones. And, I, yeah. and, and I'm not being ignorant in the chat. I literally, I cannot type. Look, I'm like this. <laughs> I'm so away just to get the uh, the ears in. Mm. And, uh, hello, everyone. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I think my mine would be big enough for oh, it. Oh, my God. What the hell? Okay? Let's, let's have a closer look at this. What what exactly that is this? It's, it's an egg. It's an, I literally got it like at work. We we get like near the end of the term, like a, a raffle, yeah. and because it's Easter, it was Easter themed. So this is my egg. I know. <laughs> it's, it's bigger than your head. What does it, it is, say? It's space? What? Well, it's a spaceship, which is ah. I thought was funny because they don't know obviously why yeah. that I'm on here during the week. Yeah. But it's sort of themed perfectly, isn't it? It's a spaceship. Mm. You couldn't get any more perfect, child. I'm really envious. Could have been a chocolate yeah. TARDIS. Yeah. It could have been. <laughs> have been even, but then I would have known they would watch this. And I'd yeah, be like, exactly. yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Wow. Yes. So uh, I'd, hate to, I'd hate to guess how long it's taken you to prepare. Sarah, but thanks for being here. <laughs> you look absolutely fabulous. And there's Ian. Ian's got a brand new T-shirt on. Yeah. Yes. Top that, Simon Horton. Let's see if he can. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Greetings all. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I've, just, I've just gone for it. I'm leaning into the Easter mood, yes. so I'm definitely a bunny. And look, I've, I've come as an Easter egg as well. I've decided to come as an Easter egg. <laughs> Really? Yes, you just got to, haven't you, really? So I'm wearing you pink really? and yellow. And look, and look, I've got my Doctor Who Easter egg from 1982 here. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And, and, and it still makes me laugh when I do that. I'm sorry. I know. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I've got a very low threshold with humour, but it still makes me chuckle. Peter Davidson, as you've never seen him before and probably will never see him again. So that's my, uh, yeah, it's still in there. Look, the egg is still in there. It's still there. Oh, my God. Yeah. You wouldn't want to eat that, would you? Never been eaten. No, you wouldn't want to eat it. No, you wouldn't. Eat it. So this is 1982. Yeah, look, look, there's the there's the date on the back. 1982. Wow. Just to prove it. There we go. There we go. Look at that. Oh, my God. That's this, older this, than me and Charlotte. <laughs> Simon, Simon, this always fascinates me when people collect things like that. So, so, so hold on. So, Simon, you brought You do know I'm a geek, yeah? Yeah, no, but listen, you brought this in 1982, was it? Yeah, 1982. <laughs> so where do you put it? Do you, do you, is the, you got a freezer that you put it in? I'm going to let you into a secret. I'm going to let you into a secret. I kept it in a cupboard for a very long time. Uh, and, and sadly, the mice did get to it. So I'm afraid, although I haven't had the egg out, there I'm afraid oh. is the hole where the pesky little... Look at it. The pesky little, but the chocolate actually it's still brown in there, you know. Why the chocolate still be edible, you know? I, I have to ask though, Simon, is it, is it, what's the box made of? Because that looks incredibly well conditioned. It's cardboard. It is cardboard. That is, it's that cardboard. is like, in, like what, what a level of cardboard that must be because there's no sort of <laughs> mix or anything on no, it. No, it's, I know it's mint, Charlotte. I literally put it away in 1982. Yeah. I'll let you into another secret. I bought six of them. I actually bought six of them. Six. Yeah, because I thought these are going to be really rare one of these days, and I sold, I sold, uh, I sold off uh, a couple of them. I gave a couple of them to friends, and I've still got one left. This is the only one I've got left. 
Um, but uh, but it's, I must be honest, it is one of my most prized possessions. Um, I've kept it yeah. very, very safe ever since because I did. Well, I love. Surprised it. hasn't melted or anything. You know? It's so it's incredible weird. that it's so well preserved. Oh, yeah. I've got a little prized possession as well. Go How on. many people can remember this? Oh, oh yeah, 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 egg, yeah. Double egg cup from the. Yes, I've got several of those. Yeah, my kids yeah. have got them. It's Fabulous. Nice. It's nice. Yeah, very nice. And this yeah. is mine. The kids are not allowed to use this. <laughs> this is mine. <laughs> <laughs> from from the golden, well, the second golden age of Doctor Who, around yeah. two thousand six, wasn't it that one? Mm -hmm. Yeah, brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Yeah, the only thing with these Doctor Who sort of egg-related items is that you've got to watch that, you know, for example, you, Simon, you stash that Doctor Who egg away all those decades, and it could hatch, and heaven knows what might happen. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know what's in it. You don't know what's That's in it, do you? Brilliant. I want to be a this is This is the work of James Brindley over on X. Fabulous, fabulous model work there from him with the, uh, the samurai sea devil there from warriors of the deep with a lot of little cute sea devils there running around sea devil chicks i count those as charlotte mm -hmm. sea devil chicks I, I like the one on the left doing that it's like he's about to tell a joke yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh fabulous fabulous stuff I just, I just love the look on the sea devil that sea devil is so proud <laughs> The thing is, though, yeah. you know, this is really strange because they could have stole this, you know, big time, couldn't they? If they yeah. made those little yeah. toys and it was in the show, yeah. it would have been something yeah. that would have made a crap load of money for the Beeb. But anyway. Yeah, so it's something that Disney needs to jump on board. That is yeah, obviously. They probably yeah, will. Yeah. Don't talk too soon. <laughs> <Oops>. <laughs> Sorry, I, meant, I dre mentioned the dreaded D word. <laughs> Yeah. Very, very early days. Obviously, uh, obviously, we have been, yeah, we've been uh, bathing in a whole uh, river of Doctor Who information this week. I think there's been lots of quotes from lots and lots of people, and we'll talk about some of that probably. But we've got lots of information as well to impart on this edition of the show to parade before your very eyes. And it's all going to be there's going to be lots and lots of stupid Easter puns. Of course, this is Type Forty Live. What more? <laughs> Do you expect and lots of nods to to the season to this fabulous sort of cheesy foil wrapped season that i really love so so much i mean when i think of easter i think of bunnies i think of chicks i think of chocolate and i think of bonnets i think of hats and uh, the doctor over the years has worn never worn an easter bonnet that i can remember but the doctor he's worn lots and lots of hats this is the closest the closest i could get this is various various headgear that the doctor's worn over oh. his uh, his lives there how many those do we remember there simon what do you think yeah quite, I, I think just just about all of them the one that looks most uh easter bonnet like i would say is collins there that's from the publicity yeah, shot for the trial of a time lord isn't it when they were when they were when they were made yeah. to put on the straw boaters and i think it works rather well as an easter bonnet that one does yeah. i should like a hat like that as uh, the second doctor said <laughs> yeah cheat a little by including that one but i thought it was all yeah all part of getting into the spirit of things charlotte what like is that about like paul mcgann's one paul mcgann's hat looks really really looks uh, painful, painful. painful. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Excruciating. Well, you yeah. could say that that was uh, sort of uh, Easter theme because it was meant to be a sort of biblical thing, yeah, wasn't it, yeah. Simon, as I remember it? Is that, is that what I'm what I'm picking up on? It was all... Yeah, it's crown of thorns, thorns, isn't it? Yeah, yeah it's the crown of thorns. Yeah. Very, very nice. You've got the 15th Doctor in his sort of... I don't know what... Is that a cowboy hat that he's wearing? I think we've talked about it before. It's not a fedora? It's a sort Stetson. Of looks like a yeah. Stetson. I, I thought it was Stetson. Yeah. 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 Obviously, the 12th Doctor looks fantastic in his top hat, but he looked fantastic in everything, didn't he, Sarah? He did. Oh, he did, yeah. Oh, look. <laughs> yeah, I really like shooting that hat. He should have kept that hat. That Maybe look he will. worked. Maybe he'll root Let's around see. for it again. Yeah. Uh, the, the hat that the third Doctor's wearing, I don't remember him ever wearing it again, though, Simon. I don't no, remember. he only wore it once. No, once. yeah, and his spearhead from space. Yeah. You you That's wouldn't it. hide that bouffant, would you? No, no, not no, no out of no. choice. No. Uh, the seventh doctor is almost unimaginable without his hat. I used to find it mm. find it annoying back in the day, but I, I really love it now, that sort of crumpled look. Hmm. <laughs> well, I liked it. I thought I thought it was a really cute little hat, that. Yeah. But, but I mean the one that I loved was Peter Davison's, although it always looked a bit yeah. strange, it never looked entirely correct, if you know what I mean. But I always loved yeah. it. Yeah, I, I yeah. like his hat as well. Mm. Yeah. I loved it when he used to roll it up. Do you remember he used to roll it up and pop it in his pocket? He did, yeah. yeah. That was good. 
I used to have I'll a hat that I'd do that with. I did love his costume, though. Uh, oh, yeah, me too. Costume. And a lot of people say to me, that's a stupid costume. And I just think it's fabulous, personally. Much I think it is a bit costume. stupid, but I love it. I do love it. Yeah, I but it's that. the Doctor. It's, yeah. it's literally, you know. The well, it, it, it's eccentric, but it's on the right side of eccentric, yes. whereas mm. Collins went too far the other way. Yeah. <laughs> like, went yeah. out the other side. Mm. Yeah. yeah, I think with Peters, it looked like something somebody would still wear. He yes, just, but they were just a bit confused. Whereas Colin, it was like, <laughs> I've, I've just come off a panto set dressed backwards. That was the yes. costume. For me. <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember where the tenth doctor was going with his uh, with his um, pink flowers. Was it Hawaii? That's when he didn't want, he, he didn't want to regenerate. He was yeah. yeah. That's when um, it, he went to see the ood. That's why yeah, it's all that was snowy. it. Yeah, was yeah. Like, of, of yeah. course it was. Fabulous times and places there with all the doctors. And the first Doctor Sharp as attack there with his Panama hat on. Yeah, I, that's Dalek's whole... master plan again, isn't it? That we talked it about. Is, yeah. It stuff. is. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's the, it's the closest we could get to. Can I ask a planets. question, Dan? Ask a yeah. question. You know all these actors that play the Doctors and their costumes and their hats and stuff like that. Did it come yeah. from the actors? Apart from we know Colin, it didn't come from Colin. But all the others, did it literally come from them? They said they wanted to wear that, or or were they given that costume? Well, Sylvester wore that. That hat was Sylvester's own. Yes. He wore yeah. it to yeah, the yeah, interview. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, and it, one of his jokes that I think he, he told he was telling them at the press conferences when he was cast, and I think he's probably still telling the same mm -hmm. anecdotes now. Yeah. Is that he he believes that they cast him because they liked the hat, but as for oh. everybody else, I, <laughs> I think. It's so I think they're all costume, they're all designers, right. as right. opposed to yeah, the yeah. actor re recommending. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Davison does yeah. sort of dress like that now, but I'm not sure if he dressed like that, that then, Ian. He, we he wears a hat a lot of the time, yeah. I believe. <laughs> right, um, but but um, Sylvester McCoy, was that all his all his clothes? For the dot part from the shirt with the with the question marks and no, I think it, no, I think it was only the hat. Although I might, hat. I think it his might be the scarf. Yeah, I think the paisley hat. scarf might have been his as well as I recall. Yeah. Now you ask Ian, right? Okay, I think the scarf yeah. might have been his. Yeah, yeah in, the, in the in the press calls, yeah, he did wear a sort of uh, short scarves and and shorter jackets as well. Mm. And before we get too too much into the merriment, Simon, I wanted to ask you about a breaking news story, which mm. you told me about only about an hour before we we came on, and so I thought I'd pass this over to talk about this gentleman who uh, it words just got out that he's passed away today. Is that's right? Yeah, literally the news broke, yes, only a few hours ago uh, that, that uh, yes, Cy Town, bless him, had died uh, at the ripe old age of 93. So he had good, a good, good old innings. Wow. Yeah, good innings. Um, and and Cy Town, for anybody that, that isn't too familiar with, with Cy Town, he, he's, he's massive as, a, as a, for, for classic fans. They will be very, very used to seeing the name Cy Town go up on the end credits of, uh, of so many episodes. Um, his very first credit, well, actually, it wasn't a credit, bless him. It was in Spearhead from Space that we just talked about a few minutes ago. And he's an extra in Spearhead from Space. That was the first oh, time he appeared in Doctor Who. Um, but his first uh, named role was was in Frontier in Space as a Dalek operator. And that's why he's yeah. pictured here with the Dalek, because that was his uh, that was his sort of stock in trade, as it were, was, was Dalek operator. As I say, he started in Frontier in Space in 1973. And he then did every do every Dalek story, then right the way through to the end of the classic run. So that was Planet of the Daleks, Death, Genesis, Destiny, Resurrection, Revelation, and Remembrance. He was in all of those Dalek stories, and quite rightly, Dan, he was the uh, he was the great we special weapons Dalek in Remembrance of the Daleks, as you've got the photo of there. Um, and that's, you know, that's one mega Dalek. That's a Dalek that kicks ass and no mistake. <laughs> um, Needs I've a good always... clean. Go on, sorry, Ian. It needs a good clean. <laughs> it does need a good clean. But that's the beauty of the special <laughs> weapons Dalek. I just thought it was such a great design and so he was the special weapons dog but but he did loads and loads of other uh parts in doctor who most of them uh if not all of them i think were uncredited and um, he was uh he was a gel guard in the three <gasps> doctors <laughs> <Brilliant. laughs> the lovely bubbly things yeah that's correct <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> he was a he was a vogue on in revenge of the cybermen a party guest in enlightenment he was a hemovore in the curse of fenric um 
and he was Harold, Harold, Harold V's brother in the Happiness Patrol. He was in the Android Invasion, oh. Invasion of the Dinosaurs, The Invisible Enemy, Castor of Alva, Inferno, The Mind of Evil. Literally, the list just goes on and on the number of credits in Doctor Who that this guy had. Although, as I say, sadly, the vast majority of them actually were uncredited because he was uh, he was he was an extra. It's as simple as that. Um, he was born. He was born in 1931 in Shropshire, literally just literally just up the road from me in the same county. Um, and his first television job was in 1969. His last television job was in 1995. So he had a good old run and his list of credits is, is just as long as you can imagine. Mm -hmm. uh, his life was as an extra um, or, or a background artist as them as them sort of more more appropriately known these days people don't like the term extra um, but back in those days he was an extra it was as simple as that or a walk on um, he did things like on the buses Steptoe and Son the goodies Monty Python Dad's Army Only Fools and Horses the brothers with Colin Baker he was in the brothers wow. with Colin Baker <laughs> and he was even in Star Wars He's, he even has a, a small role in Star Wars as well in that? Star Wars. In the original, the original, the new home. Proper one. Yeah. Proper one. The proper one. Um, so so uh, he, this guy, this guy literally, as I say, his list of credits is enormous. He pretty much never stopped working. Um, and as I say, for for, for for classic fans, they will be so used to the, seeing the name Sight Town going up on the credits. I remember it from very, very young age That's i just thing. Thing. i don't know i think i was intrigued by the name it's an odd name side town is an odd name so it yeah. sticks in the memory um and yes yeah, sadly i say we got the news literally literally a couple of hours ago that he uh, he had sadly passed and now you've said that i age. recognize i recognize his face from the happiness patrol but other than that yeah yeah. I wouldn't have been able to say what he looked like at all, which is a shame in one sense, but that was, comes to the territory, doesn't it? And a job well done for yeah. the lights of my town. Yeah, and, and, and I think that's that's obviously what he enjoyed doing. I presume he never had any any sort of major desire to get into uh, into main roles. He was presumably happy with what uh, what he was doing. Hopefully, he was anyway, because he certainly uh, he he certainly made it a, a full time career. He did very very yeah. well. It was uh, it, it was it was a good career choice for him. Yeah, in, um, in those days, they used to. Um have a huge batch of people yeah. with the extras, didn't they? And he he's yeah. part of that. There's, the, there's a um, a black guy that lives on my landing. He's always in EastEnders and he's always in adverts <laughs> and stuff like that. He's been doing that for, he's yeah. been doing that for donkey's years and he, and he makes a career out of doing it. Yeah. Every time I see him, I say to him, where are you going now? He goes, I'm off to, I'm, I'm off to, what is it, Shepparton today. Yeah. And I say, good luck. And, you know, he's off. So, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, because so it's, 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 it's reasonable like pay. Yeah, it's it's yeah, not yeah. a huge pay. It's very yeah. stable. Work. Yeah, yeah. Very, very yeah. Very yeah. Versus other things in the industry. Well, mm. once you get into that that uh, group, they don't yes. let you go. They know you're reliable, so they, yes. you, they yes. you know they recommend you to every place. So, yeah, it's cool. Yes, I did play. I did. I I did have. Uh, I was an extra for a, sh a very very short while when I came out of university. I was an extra for a short while. My my big moment. My big moment was in uh, Frost. Um, when I had to play a student and I had to walk out of a door as as David Jason was walking into the door and I had to do I had to do a sort of a, a, a curious look a double take on David Jason as he walked in through the did door. Did you get it I, wrong? Uh, did he call yeah, you a plonker? <laughs> <laughs> he didn't talk to me. I don't recall him talking to me. What can he, but, but the spooky thing is somebody did recognize me literally a couple of weeks later somebody recognized me on the street yes out of frost and i was in about three seconds <laughs> yeah. i'll dig it i'll dig the clip out at some point and we, we can play it yeah <laughs> yeah i'd love to see that Another Simon Horton bombshell here at Type Four. <laughs> it's got to be worth your subscriptions. Thank you, everybody. You don't get this on Radio Free Scarrow, do you? <laughs> Absolutely not. Not in a million years. But there are people listening to all of this very, very patiently and adding their comments already. I think it's time that we drift over to the live chat on Facebook, Rumble, and on YouTube and check in with the, the Easter greetings there. Hi, guys, and welcome to Type 40. <laughs> Thank you for your company and your patience, everybody. There's lots to get into, as always, but not before we, we check in with you and find out what's going on wherever and whenever 
you are. Oh, and we have lots of lots of names, lots of names scrolling up and scrolling down. Confuse me. Uh, Lance Uppercross is in. Uh, looking forward to a good balance. Hey, your voice is As good. always, rather than some who see fancy FX in a slick trail and call it epic and brilliant. Well, you need, thanks for the vote of confidence, yeah. Lance. <laughs> We're going to be getting into that later on. Don't you worry about that. <laughs> uh, Lord Thoth's in as well with a hi, everyone, and a, a happy Easter, Charlotte. I knew he'd be down for that. And he's always right near the beginning, Lord Thoth, in the yeah. chat. He, he, you can You can time it. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Mark Milford's in too. Hello, who family? Happy, happy Easter! Eggs terminate. Brilliant. Oh, very good. Very good. Hello. Getting into the spirit of it. The more puns, the better. Here, yeah. uh, talking about, of course, this guy. It's a pun every week. It doesn't have to be a special occasion. <laughs> Hello, everyone. <laughs> I'm extremely excited I for today's I, show. I think he needs Gary to eggs. go to the corner for that one. <laughs> 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 Hello, hello. Oh, Gary. <laughs> crossed, he gets crossed the line there, Ian. Well, yes, you, you, remember, you remember in the Zygon invasion when Peter Capaldi <gasps> calls himself Dr. Puntastic? That's actually oh, Retro God. Doc. That's yeah, his yeah. name. Oh, <laughs> could, be, could be. Thank heaven for crimpling the balloon, ready to steady the ship with an ahoy <laughs> ship, mate. Hi. He's got his sea legs. As as always, good to see you, mate. Uh, we have David Mullen in as well. We have Heretic. We have Heretic. Uh, he says, uh, evening, you beautiful lot. Hope everyone- oh, we like you, Heretic. Oh, yeah. <laughs> day you can come, come again. <laughs> it's beer in hand and no work for over a week. Congratulations, oh, Heretic. That's you. why you're in a good mood. Yeah. <laughs> We've got Tom in from T Dwarf Productions. Again, good to see you there, Tom. We've got Hello, Gary Tom. Browser. Gary Browser as well. We've got the time scales, the time scales all the Hello, way. Hello, time from- scales. Hello, love. Frisco, yeah. Oh, wow. Oh, Frisco. Very good. Happy Easter all. It's Good Friday here in Australia. All these real time travelers popping popping yeah. up from the future. Near, yeah, it is nearly here, Doug. A few more hours and it'll be Good Friday. Mm. Here it's just Good Thursday. <laughs> Give us yeah. all something to uh, to smile about. Good evening, everyone, says Rob Alexander. Good to have you back Hello. there, Rob. Uh, Simon Ashley's in too, Sarah. Oh Hello, love. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we've got all the regulars in. Fantastic. Yeah, including Big T. Big, big T, T. T. <laughs> Big T, Big T, Big T. Greetings and salutations. <laughs> He's even got a dance. He's not just got a song. He's got a dance now. <laughs> that was a bloody show. <laughs> Good to have you back, Tony. Happy Easter, mate. It's, it's that eyebrow of the master is telling you you need to give yeah. him a dance. Yeah. <laughs> could be, could be. We have James. We have James A. Fitzpatrick in. I haven't seen the start of one of these in months. Hey, oh. <laughs> Hello, James. Uh, Welcome to the start. Yeah, well, <laughs> see what you've been missing yeah. all this time. <laughs> uh, Tom is busy making an Easter scene over on Facebook. Yeah, we need the photos of this. Tom can't wait to see this one. Doing that in real time, obviously. Uh, Elizabeth Knightsbridge is in, but she advises to stay well back from the screen, everyone, because oh. the poor lamb has got COVID. Oh. oh no. Anyone catching it from me? Good evening. Hope you're all well. Well, I'm pretty well, yeah, well Elizabeth. Better. Oh yeah, we sympathise, Elizabeth. I think we've all had it, and it's rotten. So sympathy. Yeah. Feel better soon, Elizabeth. Yeah. Thank you for joining us. That's what we can, you know. Yeah, cheer you, hope you can cheer you up a bit. Give, give us, give, give us all a lift. Uh, Paul Toslin's in as well with a high or, and so is Grumpy Old Bob. Grumpy old Bob. <laughs> Hello, Hello, Grumpy old Bob. Hello, Grumpy old Bob. We've got to leave off the 56, have we? Uh, we've got YW back in as well. Hello, everyone. I can only stay for a little bit. A little bit of what? A little bit of Easter. <laughs> <laughs> a, little, a little bit of what? Better not ask. Better not ask. Uh, get down and get with it, says uh, Grumpy <laughs> Dublin. Well, <laughs> no, I won't. <laughs> it's too early in the stream for that. Yeah. <laughs> Move on. Move on. Uh, oh, time. dear. Uh, Gaz, Gaz is here. Gaz the man, in fact, can't leave the Gaz. Started uh, watching Gaz. the last month, loving the month and loving the balanced opinions. Well, we're happy to have you with us, Gaz. Good to see that you you best. that you get it. That's very much what we're all about here. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Tumbleweeds. <laughs> just oh, Ian. That's just Ian. Ian. <laughs> Oh, yeah, we love you. We love you. <laughs> We've got bunny rabbits in the chat. This is what we're doing. More bunny rabbits, please, everybody. Uh, TARDIS Travels is here as well with that. Hi, double L. Uh, What's the double L stand for? Is that some sort of rude slang that I'm not, not up on? 
Yeah. Best not to it's ask. Probably. Yeah, it'd be a rare thing, wouldn't it? Maybe he forgot the O between the LLs. Oh, that could be it. That could be it. Side of that strike says hi to everyone. Hi. Absolutely everyone. And Rose, uh, well, here we have a big swing here, trying to get, trying to take the mantle from Gary Akers. Hello, yeah. Hi to everyone in the chat. Have an excellent oh, Easter egg extravaganza and happy mm -hmm. egg hunting. And then we've got all the highs covering every single time zone, as always from Rose. She never likes to leave any base uncovered. Chuck again. <laughs> that will be my house on Sunday, yes. Quite right, too. Same here. Do you still hide Easter eggs all around the the house and garden, Sarah, in your place? Because obviously your little ones are getting larger now, aren't they? Your, well, yeah, your well, I wasn't going larger. to. Larger. But then, but then, but then uh, yeah, now Zach did ask. He went, oh, are, we doing, are you doing an Easter egg hunt? And he, he looked so disappointed. So, yeah, the only thing is I've got to get up at the crack of dawn. <laughs> and hide them, and I just let you know if anybody's looking out the window, yeah. they just see me in my pajamas and your Easter bunny and your ears, and you've got eight ears creeping out at five o'clock in the morning, hiding eggs, looking like a complete mental. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they'll be surprised, Sarah. <laughs> Cliff Maxwell's in, and he's commenting about your Easter egg stash, Simon. I mean, you bought six of those eggs there from yeah. all the way back in '82. Yeah, uh, you bought it solely because of the Davis image. <laughs> <laughs> claims could claims. be could be it did amuse yeah. me a lot <laughs> Leave, i would have done let's be honest <laughs> simon ashley says my lips are salivating uh, what God. what simon uh, uh, i know what it is it. it's uh charlotte's easter egg that's what it yeah. is yeah that's, that's <laughs> what it is quite right she's too. never gonna hide that is she in the garden no, no. <laughs> oh good. tom look at that one very good oh. Very good, Tom. Yeah, bring bring the puns, everybody. Electric oh. Bull is in too with a hola. 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 I think Charlotte's got the pronunciation right there. <laughs> well, good evening, folks, from Richard Brooks. And we have Vanessa in the live chat as well. Hello, Vanessa. Oh, hi, Vanessa. <laughs> Oh, she says, are you kidding? Now, this is back to our question earlier on about the hats, the various hats that the various doctors were wearing. She says, are you kidding? And Matt begged for the face. And uh, Moffat didn't want to give it to him. He didn't want him to have the bow tie either, didn't he? What does Moffat know? know? What does he know? Party pooper. He know? Yeah. And we have lots of people as well joining in our uh, our condolences there to the friends and family of the late Saitan who's passed away today. Mm. Good evening, all, says John Yule. Hello, John. John. Hello, John. Hello, John. Good, Good, to new too. Good to have you back, EJ. And lots more people as well. So, yeah, the uh, we don't have any policy on uh, on late entrance. So the doors are always open to our console room here at Type 40 Live. Keep the comments coming. Keep, yeah, keep uh, the puns coming as well. And everything in between as we get stuck into, uh, into the Doctor Who news and catch up on what's been going on throughout all of space and time. Cheers. Happy Easter. Yeah, that's the kind of stuff. You're getting it. You're getting it. Yes. What we, this is what we love, love to see. Well, we love it. Somebody who's looking a little bit, hmm, a little bit cagey is uh, this fellow. I don't know. I don't know why he'd be looking like that. Maybe we can cheer up uh, the doctor as well. I don't know. We'll have to, we'll have to see. Okay. What next? How about a little bit of this? Playing the doctor. And I'm Mandy Rose and I play Jenny. For the Doctor Who fan film, Doctor Who Meets the Scorpion, this is the Type 40 podcast. Yes, so that's uh, that's Philip Roy there yeah. from Doctor Who Meets the Scorpion. We spoke to Philip, if you remember, Ian, this was a couple of months ago now, wasn't it? Three or four yeah. months ago, about this yeah. fabulous fan film. Things are moving mm -hmm. apace, I'm happy to say, and there's a trailer okay. up now yeah. that everybody can see. So it's very exciting, and we're going to get together again, aren't we, and do some sort of reaction to it. Yep. But uh, yep. it was a very interesting conversation, wasn't it, Ian? And obviously you had a lot to talk about with Philip, both being filmmakers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He seems to be doing a good job, and I can't wait yeah. to see it. So there you yeah. go. Yeah, it's I so exciting. Said... These these fan productions are just getting more and more sophisticated. And no, they're not. Know, they're... they're not. <laughs> <laughs> Have you not I seen mean, some yeah. of them? This no, one looks they... good. This... Um, but they're, 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 the majority of them are not so not so mm. good because they're, they're, because obviously, well, the last one we reviewed, me and uh, Dan reviewed, was 
before this one. I can't remember which one it was, and that was okay, weren't it? The one with yeah, the, the MB and Homeland one. That's it, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's the one I meant. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. you know, there's a lot. That's mm. really there's some really bad ones out there, mm. and there's some really good ones out there. Do you know what I mean? You know, it's just, there's a huge mixture there. But mm. um, this one looks really good though. I'm looking forward to seeing this one. Yeah, yeah. So they have been in touch. The team from Doctor Who meets the Scorpion. Can't wait to tell you more about all of that. Uh, I've heard of this. Thanks for promoting it, says David Mullen. Fine. Yeah, good stuff. Uh, Ian, be a gentleman, dude, says Lord. <laughs> 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 He's a gentleman. Of course he is. And yeah, all our best to Philip and everybody working so hard there on Doctor Who meets the Scorpion. Go, go and take a look at the trailer and, and get back to us and see what I you think. I can only be honest. That's yeah. that's my we thing. Would, that's Ian, my we thing. wouldn't have you any other way. Exactly. No. Of course we wouldn't. Of course we wouldn't. And yeah, bang up to date with Doctor Who now, though. Doctor Who itself. To catch up on, on the story from last week, of course. Now, last time on Type 40 Live, we were all sort of reeling from the announcement that came a couple of weeks ago now, wasn't it? That the BBC have kind of, well, they've kind of sold out the British audience for Disney Plus. So the American market are going to be getting priority treatment effectively, getting to watch the new season a day earlier than UK viewers. You know, the just the poor sods have been paying for it for the last six decades, Simon. It's uh, quite extraordinary, really, when you when you think about it. So this was the this was the layer of the land, if you remember. So it starts with people in LA are going to technically get to see it first on the it's the 10th of May for them. The 11th of May for for the UK. When you know, if you want to stay up until the small hours and watch Doctor Who, then then go for it. Otherwise, it's you know you're waiting, you wait in a day until everybody else has seen it. Blah blah blah. You know, we've we've been there and we've and we've done that. But whilst we were talking about all of that, if you remember, we also got stuck into Doctor Who itself, and we revealed the titles of the first two episodes of the season here on the show. So it begins with the Call of the Universe and the Devil's Cord. Screening and dropping, dropping and screening in a double bill on May the 11th in the UK, May the 10th, really, May the 11th in the UK. And uh, so in in these episodes, it's, uh, let's get it up on screen. So in the first one, Ruby Sunday's first trip in the TARDIS takes her to a space station. That's the call of the universe by Russell T. Davies. And then in episode two, Ruby meets her idols when the TARDIS lands in 1960s Liverpool. But there's a deadly threat waiting for Ruby and the Doctor. So yeah, that's all coming up on May the 11th. But I thought it was time that we lift lift the lid a little on the remaining six episodes that are going to make up season one of all new all new Doctor Who. We've got some breakdowns and some pictures. So here we are, and we're going to tell you about them now. So how about we look at this one, this one first. This is episode three, Dream a Little Dream of Me. Now, the writer officially hasn't been announced, of course, but we believe this to be by Stephen Moffat. And the blurb for this is a race against the clock to save Ruby's grandmother who has been asleep for weeks. So that's that's what that's about. So this looks like the one that will return Stephen Moffat to the show, Charlotte. Uh, he does thrive on those kind of mystery stories, doesn't he? Things that are a little unnerving. Does this sound like standard Moffat fare to you? Well, I'm also thinking like creatures and the mystery of what's causing the dreams. Yeah, that's definitely Moffat. And it could, if it's got a touch of that horror which Moffitt was very good at the first time around. So I would hope he would have that a bit of a scare factor here, a bit of a horror, that mystery. But I, I, I be, I'm surprised he's that early on. He's getting an mm. episode slot in the series. I thought he would have, they would have held off a bit longer for Moffitt, honestly. And it would just be interesting just to see what he's what he's like after he's had his little rest now. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I'm be- really intrigued with because he's 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 not stopped working. He's done loads of stuff since who, but obviously who's a different kettle of fish. So it's just going to be interesting what he's like now writing for it. Have you missed Stephen Moffat, Sarah? Yeah, I have. I mean, I, obviously, I mean, I was as frustrated as the next person. He, he was starting to run out of steam, and he, he was there a bit too long. I think, but yeah, I think it's been long enough. As much as I'm excited, I'm a bit wary now because 
I was excited for Russell's return and uh, uh, to say I was disappointed is an understatement. So I'm hoping just, you know, the one episode and then the Christmas one, I'm hoping he's still firing on all cylinders and, you know, this break that he's had, uh, you know, we've, we're back to Moffat being good and underneath Russell because obviously his first run of stories when he was under Russell was some of the best he's ever done. Um, which is a good sign. I mean, th this is so Moffat. This is this <laughs> conjures up, you know, like um, sleep no more. But, you know, with the song title, you know, there was always last this, Christmas. Last yeah. Christmas, and obviously, the I mean, any Stranger Things fans will know this song was used a lot. This song title was used a lot in series four. Um, so I wonder if like Charlotte's right, and there is going to be like this horror element. And I think there will things. be. So you so this this makes me very interested and hopeful. I feel that they're probably going to put Stephen Moffat's episode pretty early on, really, Ian, because they're going to a global streaming platform with this series. Obviously, there's a certain amount of us who are going to uh, we're going to watch it whatever and whichever episodes come out in whichever order but i suppose if he if russell if bad wolf they want to grab as many people internationally while they've got this platform as possible they probably realize that time is of the essence are they wise to put their most experienced writers the stephen moffat and russell t davis right there up front leading the very first episodes bang 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 because they've got to grab people haven't they every single week there can't be any duds in this run can there what do you think sorry is that question to me yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Stephen I'm, Moffat. This, this sorry, I don't. Movie. I don't care. I, I'm not. I'm not going to watch this stuff. So, yeah. I, I'm not really interested in any of it. So, ke even next, Stephen next person, please. Even I'm Stephen really, Moffat coming back. Don't Dan. care, Dan. I don't care. This is not Doctor Who for me. I'm sorry, but, but Ian, am I not right in remembering that you you like the Matt Smith era? So presumably you like Moffat, do you? Yes, I do like his writing. He sometimes goes off a bit, but um, and sometimes doesn't know how to end it. But I think he's created some of the best uh, Doctor Who stories in in history. He really has, and he's a really good writer when he puts his mind to actually finishing the script, yes. <laughs> finishing the ending. But this era, I'm not interested in it at all. So you won't I, even I, be watching this, even though it's Moffat no, that's writing. No, 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 not going to watch any of it. I'm sorry, but that's just the way I feel. I'm sorry. No, no, I, I, no need I, to apologise. No, I get it. I get it. Where are you? Where are you with it, Simon? Because you know, I cool. think we were all we were all a little Moffated out, weren't we? But I, I have. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I, I'm afraid on this one in particular. You know, I've kind of gone on record before now saying Moffat is I really don't rate him as a writer <laughs> at all not even <laughs> one tiny bit I don't like what him about the, the angel thing that was quite good the uh, no the... Uh, oh, oh blink, blink, blink blink that's the yeah. only one that is the only one I kind of I to begin with I thought the doctor dances uh was really good mm. and then I watched it back and I'm like actually no it's just a shallow what a... Gig. yeah sorry I'm afraid that's exactly how I feel um <laughs> what about blink, the 11th hour Eleventh hour, I love it. No, hated it. Honestly, I'm sorry. I hated it. Wow. Hated it. Okay. Hated it. And and I just got really annoyed with the whole Moffat era as it just went on and on and on, and it became more convoluted and impossible to understand. And he got more and more arrogant, <laughs> saying, "Oh, you're clearly not clever enough to understand it." And I'm like, "No, actually, Moffat, it's just rubbish writing." Um, so sorry, I couldn't be less interested. This is not swung it for me. It suddenly made me given me any well, renewed I'll, hope for the. I'll for cheer the you up a little bit. I'll cheer, here, have one of these. Okay. Have one of these. Hey, thank hey. you. A hot cross I bun. I'll have a hot <laughs> cross bun. Thank you. Have one of those. Uh, yes, we've got a quote here from Stephen Moffat who says, uh, "Yeah, so when it was revealed that he was, I mean, we told you on the show weeks ago, but when it was officially revealed that he was going to be writing for the show again, he said, yes, okay, fair enough. Apologies to everyone. I very slightly misled." I am, in fact, writing an episode of the new series of Doctor Who, exactly like I said I never would. What can I tell you? There was begging, there was pleading, but finally Russell agreed to let me have another go, so long as I got out of his garden. Yeah. I, I rather think it was the other way around and Russell I was, was in his garden. Thinking, <laughs> I was thinking the exact same thing. I think Russell went to you, mate. <laughs> he says he, he continued working with old friends and a brand new doctor i couldn't be happier sorry i was a bit reticent on the subject for so long very convincing Stephen. yeah it was all part of an elaborate plan that would have delighted millions but at the last minute i forgot what it was 
So it's a very typically Stephen Moffat uh, mm. press release there statement. He probably spent all day writing that, but yeah, it's, it's very very nice. I'm kind of happy to see him back, but I do understand why some of you may may prefer well one of these maybe one of these. There we are. This is what people problematic think about today, that. isn't it? They say uh, hot cross bun. Hot cross bun, not, yeah. not on this channel. It is. It is <laughs> no, <laughs> no hot chick yeah. buns on this show. <laughs> oh, don't get me That's started. What Change it, don't they? Want to change it to a tick? <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> uh, Simon Anthony says, "I love complexity. Bring it on." I know, and, I, and I've just, what? I've just answered Simon to say, "I love complexity." Two Warriors Gate is one of my favourite stories, and that makes very, very little sense. But I just feel the Moffat era just got too bogged down in not making week. any sense. It was week after week. week, after week. It was literally relentless. Stories, um, that, so stories in that in that brand work better when they're dropped. Uh, very strategically, I think, Simon. Yeah, that, that's that's kind of my feeling. And and in all honesty, what really put my back up was the uh, the end, the interviews with Moffat, where he literally said, "If you're not, you, you're clearly not clever enough to understand my very very good writing." And and I just thought, no, the arrogance of the man has just turned me off. Sorry, you know what, Simon. I do agree with you. He, he, I I think he started off very well in my opinion obviously you don't agree i think he had some there were some really good I, uh, no i would agree i would agree you're right he but did start off. i agree with you when he went on and he it was obvious that he was running out of ideas yeah. so he, he like he wouldn't give us endings to something that he'd lead us up to then suddenly it's gone and you're like well yeah. how did he get out of that and it's just same thing with Sherlock when he when he wrote Sherlock. He, he admitted well. he'd run out of ideas with Doctor Who he said it yeah, yeah. he did yeah he did to, be fair, to, to him to give him credit he said it Good yeah. evening to our friend John Yorden in the live chat on YouTube. It's not a coincidence that Moff is back in the public talking about Doctor Who. Uh, Russell T. Davis' stock has fallen due to previous comments, so this is a PR mm. job to get yeah. Moff doing yeah. the rest. I, I absolutely agree. I do agree. And mm, Moffat so is probably more... I mean, RTD is very much like a British institution, you know, with his writing. Yeah. Moffat is global. The Americans really took to mo the Moffat era even more so than RTD, and I don't think Russell's particularly forgiven him for it. Um, it's some um, combination between him and Matt Smith, isn't it, Sarah? Yeah, and obviously America, Moffat yeah. had that kind of JNT flair, you know, going to the conventions. He was yeah. very much. I mean, I remember the pictures. Were, you know, it was it was Stephen, Matt, Amy, mm. uh, Amy, Karen. Yeah. Wrote, yeah. um, I can't think of the names Arthur and um, Alex. <laughs> <Half> <laughs> that kind of, uh, um, yeah. They were very yeah. much like the dream team, weren't they? And um, yeah, I think that, yeah. that doing that, you know, caught in America, got them all, you know, in good favour. Um, so yeah, so I think probably with the Disney deal as well, I think he's leaning heavily. Yeah, it does make sense. To me, it, does it make makes sense. it does make absolutely perfect. It makes perfect sense when you when you're stepping up to this global platform. The, the, Doctor Who cannot afford to miss any of these eight weeks, and mm. uh, I, I'm I'm not going to be cynical about this at all. I'm not going to say they should be taking more chances. This show can't afford to take any chances. Not at they all. need to they need to get the most seasoned writers they possibly can can to grab as many people as quickly as possible. Otherwise, this show really will get a good hiding and, and could disappear into the woodwork again for another five to 10 to 15 years, which I know some people would say could, could do it some good, but obviously their aspirations for it are to, to be a lasting success in its, in its new home. I also want to be alive when it comes back. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> I want to be alive to enjoy it. There's no point being good if we're all brown bread, isn't it's, there? Uh, yeah, exactly. it's, it's, it's interesting. The, t the time scales has just asked in the chat, is Britain really that short of writers? It is actually. Yes, yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. yeah. Well, really I'm still around. It's like, ev <laughs> I'm it's like around. everywhere else. They've they've sacked, have retired, they've pensioned off yeah. all yeah. of the people who were actually good, who knew what they were doing, knew their craft, who were seasoned. Because you know, they've got a major problem. A lot of them were 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 white guys <laughs> yeah, <laughs> above exactly. the age of forty. So exactly. they just don't want them on the. Uh, they just don't want them writing for the media anymore. Especially I mean, it's, it's harsh, but it's, but it's true. But the BBC are the very, very yeah. worst for it. Yeah. Uh, moving on, we've got now. Charlotte's got some some details here of episode four. Despite what the caption says, this is episode four, and this is Albion by Russell T Davies. So what happens in this one, Charlotte? So this is Roger at Gwillam has his eyes on Downing Street. His inspiration one. Harold Saxon. 
Oh, oh dear. Sex. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. This, is, this is a bad idea. This, this is, is tumbleweeds. As mom was like, as soon as soon as I saw Harold Saxon, uh, yeah. we quickly we that quickly bad going move. back that's... to an old storyline. Yeah, that's, that's a bad that nobody will remember. Nobody will, apart from fans, probably that's, will not yeah, remember. This is not going to, you know, make it accessible for the new fans. So, Sarah, who who was Harold Saxon then? For the people who might might have been too drunk to remember, oh, yeah, Harold Saxon was the prime minister. Of the of Great Britain, um, and it was actually the master, the John Sims, absolutely barking mad mm. master. Um, oh my God, this just smells of desperation. Yeah, it does. Then it's more just like, remember my era, remember when it was good. Uh, well, not- as uh, I think that that's only part of the problem. I think he's gonna, I think he's gonna paint Harold Saxon out in this to be a kind of. Margaret Thatcher, Winston Churchill kind of figure, no, and that, and I don't this, think so. I, 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 and I think this is going to be a major swing at the uh, people such as um, the Reform Party and Richard Tice and Nigel Farage. Oh God, we saw that. that. We saw that. We saw some pictures of the the British flag. Them, them posters. Yeah. Oh God. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. It's a bit of Reform no, I'm, Party, I'm GB News, all those people. Oh, Russell T Davies hates. Dan. Charlie? Dan. There's a more obvious target here. Look at the name, Roger at Gwillem. It's a certain prime minister that had a stupid haircut and couldn't. couldn't That's couldn't, most of them. <laughs> no, a certain yeah, prime minister that was a... blonde and had a stupid oh, haircut. Oh, yeah. Yeah, this is swing at the conservatives. This, this, come on, look at the name. TV look license. at the name, yeah. folks. That that screamed conservative. And uh, yeah, Jay, good point. Reese Mogg as well. Why? Yeah. Yeah. This is the reason why I'm not watching well. this. Watching this rubbish. It's the swingers. Everybody who oh, isn't yeah. on the far on the far left. I Good luck, like everybody. <laughs> <laughs> That's Albion by Russell T. Davis. That is episode four, allegedly, okay. allegedly. So it continues in episode episode five. And uh, <laughs> Ian, since you're just so into this, you can tell us all about <laughs> episode episode five. This is called five. Copycat. This is called yeah. This is called Copycat. Uh, oh what oh jesus christ <laughs> <laughs> really yeah so what, what does it say I, I can't even read that so small uh someone resigns of terror truly begins and unit is compromised i don't know what that means that's right and yeah, i don't so care w- <laughs> <laughs> there you go <laughs> gwillem's reign of terror Willems, tru- yes. truly yeah. begins and unit is compromised this is, is that the Gwillem? Uh, no Gwillem no, is that's the not Gwillem. we've just seen that oh, Anar and Bernard is, is playing. Uh, this is Lenny Rush, the okay. child actor. Yeah. The, uh, the he's, playing, he's playing Richie Sunak, obviously. It's a diversity. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, they they just do Doctor Who stories with monsters and spaceships and traveling through yeah. time. Why? Why are they? Why are they putting this crap into our TV shows? I just don't understand well, the logic. I've got an. An, I've got a question as well. <laughs> What's Sorry. Unit done this time to get compromised? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, come on, is Unit ever not compromised at this point? Is it really <laughs> they bring, they bring, it's like Gallifrey. They bring it back to destroy it. They bring Unit back to yeah. compromise it. And all, it's like the Federation in Star Trek where all the admirals are all corrupt, Charlotte. They're all wrong And it's, it's like, the same with Unit. They just made a point in the specials. Here we've got a lovely tower, which is totally not Avengers Tower yeah, from Marvel. Yeah. It's like we've got a lovely tower, Kate's back. <laughs> And within two episodes, they're in they're, they're in trouble. And they open mm. the big door so the TARDIS can fly <laughs> in. <laughs> That's, no, weird. Just... That's weird. <laughs> who is Le- who is Lenny Rush? Does anybody recognise this guy? I think he's he's had a couple of I've relatively him, successful I've seen him on the TV. Um, he does it, he, he, he's done a comedy show, but I don't really know. I don't know if he can act. I, think I mean, has he acted in anything, or is he has he has he acted? I think he was in that. Um, what was it when it was like Oliver? But it was on. It was on CBB, CBBC recently that had um, Christopher Eccleston in as Fagan. Oh, yeah, I think he was in that. 
<laughs> uh, May Bitten Austin Powers crossover suggests John Smith. Uh, Fly surprised. Highland asks, are these titles the real ones or just rumoured? These are the real titles as of our sources here at Type 40 Live. Mm-hmm. Obviously, you know, the one things that can change right right up until a week of transmission are episode titles. This, this has happened all the way through Doctor mm-hmm. Who. So that's our disclaimer there. But these are the titles and these are the breakdowns here from our sources. Uh, copycat, a momentary, a momentary bit of self-awareness from Russell T. Davis, <laughs> yeah. says Gary Akers. <laughs> uh, 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 we have uh, Mini Me, says uh, John Smith. What the, uh, is there a Maxi Me? I don't know. Mm, is there a Maxi Me? Uh, both parties need to be kicked out, suggests uh, John Smith. I don't know. Who's he yeah. talking about? Oh, he's he's talking about party politics there. Not uh, I thought you meant Stephen Moffat and Russell T. Davis. <laughs> That's what I thought you well. meant. <laughs> I would agree. <laughs> Yeah. Is the two, the two party uh, system we seem to have, or the uni party here we've got in Great Britain at the moment? Uh, John Cartwright suggests YouTube content creators are going to have a guild day, yeah. a guild couple of months, maybe. Yeah, good, yeah, good couple of months. Uh, at this point, <laughs> Kate Westwood Stewart would be facing several security breach inquiries, suggests John Yulden. That's in line with your comment. It's, well, oh, it's pathetic. And all it does is it just shows you that. Putting a woman in charge is like the worst thing. They don't realise how it looks. And they've already employed Mel <laughs> and uh, Donna as well. Donna <laughs> and uh, she, what's she called? Shirley the, in the wheelchair. I'd like basically employ a load of women in the top <laughs> positions and watch June all go to pot. That's <laughs> what yeah. Recipe for for complete and utter disaster, of course. Yeah, as is yet, and never, never, obviously, never ask women for relationship advice, either. Guys, remember that. Um, next up, we've got uh, episode episode six. So, do you want to? T- <laughs> Sarah's still composing stuff. Do you want to tell us about episode six, Sarah? Since you're dressed so beautifully, I think you could you could be right to tell us about Notice Neptune by oh, Kate Heron and Bri- Bryony Redman. That's the next one. Okay, a relaxing trip to the Regency era turns out to be nothing of the sort. Beware the Duchess. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, Ruby looks gorgeous in that in that gear, doesn't she? I mean, you know, that has to be has to be accepted. Okay. And these are by the, the two writers of... Now, this is where things get a oh, bit Oh, God. God. <laughs> This, these, the two writers uh, of this one are the ones that Russell has um, coaxed away from the awful Marvel Studios series Loki. So uh, any hopes that I had for this, which it does look stunning. The gowns look beautiful. Um, and it's a cool title. Uh, but um, mm, Kate Heron and Bryony Redmond, <clears throat> don't know. I'm guessing you've probably never heard of these two writers, Simon. What? Pardon me? Who? No, I haven't got a clue. I've never heard of them. Of course, I've never heard of them. Of course, I've never heard of them. Have they got good? Uh, have they got good? Um, good stuff behind them? Have they got good no. recommendation? No. Good oh, no, no, no. Uh, well, I won't no. go that far. This awful series from Marvel. There, that's that's where they first teamed up, and heaven knows what they're going to do to uh, what they're going to do to Doctor Who. I hear but- that he's going to be dancing with a guy in this one. Mm-hmm. Oh no, stop it. <laughs> well, there I you go. Good luck, everybody. Oh no. <laughs> oh, God, this does fill me with dread. And you know, Dan, you know how much I love the historical episodes. And I'm yeah. just like, oh dear. Uh, yeah, I love the idea of them going to the Regency period. And obviously, this is the episode that features Jonathan Groff. I think that obviously Millie looks stunning. I think you know, Shooter looks fantastic. You know, we'll, we'll come to that in a little while when we talk about the trailer. But I have to say, it's the writers. That's what's ringing my alarm bells about this one, Charlotte. To be honest, I don't watch any Marvel stuff, so I don't. Re- I can't comment Pretty personally on the quality of the right of these writers. So for me, it's going to be pretty like going in not knowing. Mm. So I'll just watch it as its own thing and see. But just off the tagline, that's the. To be fair, if I was literally just looking at the tagline. That's the one that so far sounds the best to me because like it's not retreading yeah. old storylines yeah, it's going to be really in your face current day earth like based art politics if that makes sense like yeah. the, well, it, well, it sounds like there's an actually mo- a monster in it or some it's, kind yeah, of it, it villain. sounds yeah. like a threat so out of just if i just saw it without like i said the knowing of anything which i don't know anyway but just t- take it as a pure so like a little 
yeah. club, I would say that's the most promising sounding so far. Yeah, I'm not going to argue with that. I think it does. I think that breakdown does sound interesting, and and I think it does look pretty good. Looks pretty well made. So, in all sincerity, I am open to this. But it's the as John says, it's the Loki writers. Loki does have its fans, including uh, Russell T Davis and Simon Anthony Day in the live chat. Why are we not Loki's surprised? Mm. And uh, Gregory Jones says, "I've always thought of Type Forty as the GB news of Doctor Who <laughs> podcasts." <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, Lord. Move oh, on. God. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, fantastic stuff. And uh, that's Notice Neptune episode six by Kate Heron and Bryony Redman. There, uh, yes. Move moving on. I think Simon, do you want to tell us about episode episode seven? I think you're probably going to like this. Not one. really, but I will do. <laughs> <laughs> it's another one by Russell T Davies, and it's called. Oh, the good oh, oh, my favourite writer of all time. Uh, okay, here we go. Part story it's... called the Three Body Problem. Let's go. Okay, St- steal yourselves, folks. So the Doctor and Ruby. <sighs> Sorry, I just yawned in. The Doctor and Ruby are torn apart again, and only Mel can understand the <clears throat> mavity of the situation. Oh, my God. <laughs> so this is where that all, all works up to. So uh, mavity is in the... Oh, so do we care about the Doctor and Ruby being torn no. apart? Probably no. not. No, do there's we care about mavity? Could... Probably there's not. There's only one thing I can say, guys. <laughs> Good luck, everybody. <laughs> Good luck. You know I'm a fan of Russell T. Davies. I I like I I like Mel uh, Bonnie Langford. I thought she was fantastic in the in the giggle. I thought she was brilliant. I think she was the, underused. She was wasted. The, but the she thing with the doc, when we get these sort of blurbs now, obviously, because this is getting late into the season, these synopsis. So it all hinges on how invested we are in the Doctor and Ruby. When we've spent precisely 57 minutes in their company so far, Charlotte, and we already know that one of them's leaving, it's a little difficult to well, put yeah, too and it's Yeah, and it depends how convincing the separation is. Because yeah. if you think, oh, this is such an easily fixed situation, or, oh, they're not really that sort of in danger being apart, mm-hmm. like those things are so key. You need to basically be scared for both yeah. of them, honestly, not just Ruby being mm. the companion, you need to be scared for the Doctor. I mean, it can and be you... done. It can, be, if you look oh, yeah. back at um, series, series three, when Mar- Martha gets kidnapped in episode three, and we, we were there, we were worried about her, and then in I can't remember what the the forty two, where she gets ejected out of the space station, and again that was another high stakes. And we'd only known her for a very short time. So as long as the writing's good, the performance yeah. is strong, and we are invested in these two, then there's no reason why it shouldn't work. But again, I, it, but obviously, you know, Freema wasn't leaving. <laughs> we didn't yeah. know Freema had gone at the start of the, <laughs> the new run. <laughs> Little different, isn't it? Uh, uh, there's a big TV show at the moment on Netflix called Three Body Problem at, at the moment now, isn't there? So uh, I don't know whether they'll change that title because it could lead to confusion. But the title we do have at the moment, along with that synopsis, yeah, this is this is leaked information. But this is uh, as of time of recording of live streaming. This is coming to us from reliable sources. And and the Mavity, that that really yeah. is that's that we're really going to be talking about Mavity, are we? we this is it. <laughs> that we're still going on about this Mavity. It looks like it. It looks like it. Uh, Simon Anthony says Mavity looks like the seed of a major retcon. It's obviously an ongoing thing, yeah, and, and well, I heard a rumor a about. Do you want to hear well. this rumor? Do you want to hear Go this on, rumor then. about Mavity? So basically, there's a. I don't know if it's true. Somebody told me this that the reason why Mavity word exists is because. When the David Tennant Doctor changed history slightly, then going forward, everything has changed. So that means that Shooty can appear in the, the Bridgerton time and, and his colour will not be questioned. Because something... Oh, happened. right. So it's we've gone down an alternate timeline. Yeah, line, it's, it's in other words, he can go backwards and forwards in time and the, the, the question about his colour will not be questioned because they change everything by doing that one thing right. that's the rumor i don't know if it's true but then again i don't care good luck everybody <laughs> I, I don't mind that Stop being smart. i don't mind that because it can just be a separate timeline like yeah, exactly. all the crap yeah, star exactly. trek yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just ignore. Yeah. 
Yeah. But it's cool, this whole Mavity stuff is just boring. I'm just I just find the very word irritating, and it just constantly reminds me of the recasting of uh, Sir Isaac Newton, um, yeah. the, re the re racing of Sir Isaac Newton. So I just don't want to hear the word Mavity ever again as long as I live. But also, that rumor shows if it's true, obviously we'll have to see. Mm. Yeah. He's taking shortcuts again because the hard work would be how would I write a yeah, doctor? Exactly. exactly. Of shooty skin colour in periodic in that, in that era, that would be a harder job for a writer to do. So yeah. if he's used this mavity, it's just Russell going. I don't need to deal with that now. So yeah. what shortcuts? Well, he did. He did. He had another shortcut, didn't he, with the uh, with the paper, didn't he? When um, yeah. he created that, didn't he as well? Psychic so, paper, yeah, like mm. paper, yeah. Mm. So. And that was a good a, idea. We've got a comment here from Electric Bull in the live chat. Electric Bull, uh, it's uh, if you're embarrassed, that's that's your problem, my friend. I'm not embarrassed. Are you embarrassed, anybody? Embarrassed about what? Why? What's he say? Well, I don't know. What, what's the uh... exactly? Uh, he also goes on to say this is very clearly BS. Everything we know about season series fourteen doesn't line up with this. I'm afraid uh, I would say that everything that we've seen, every onset report we've seen, every guest star that we know, all the little set details, just as Sarah said there about those offices in Cardiff that were that were done out to uh, to look a certain way well over a year ago. Now this exactly lines up with everything that we've seen and heard before. For, and we don't just bring you any old tat here at Type Forty Live. You ought to know that. Know that by now, with the greatest of with the greatest of respects. Thank thank you for your time here. But uh, yeah, no, and also just to confirm, Electric Ball. Don't worry, we're not upset. It's fine. We're having fun. It's okay. We're not yeah, upset. Exactly, yeah. Don't worry about us. We're good. Thank you for your comment. That's uh, I salute you, sir. There you yeah. Mm. And yeah. Yeah. To answer Vanessa, yes, Forty Two was Tribunal. and I actually like that episode. I think. Oh, it's a cracking episode. Forty Two is a cracking episode. <laughs> there you go. Even even can, uh... <laughs> there you oh, go. Brilliant, brilliant episode. Really, really good. <laughs> we have yes, and it all finishes with an hour-long season finale. Here, it's uh, the title we've got at the moment is simply "Goodbye Ruby Sunday" again by Russell T Davis, and this will just wrap it all up. It says Mel and Rose are the Doctor's only hope of saving Ruby Sunday. That's all we have. I, I take it they don't from. save her because she got picked out the show. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think we can work out the ending of this one, can't we? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so so that is it. Obviously, there's um, there's a lot to go. With two months in between. When does it come back? So it's yeah, the middle of May. So it's about a month and a half there until the series starts. This is again another couple of months on. So things could change but our information has come from sources which we you know we've been sent this by several people now so we've got every reason to suspect that it's all going to line up and this is very much the shape of season one of all new doctor who which is uh, coming everywhere of course disney plus gets it first on may the 10th and we get it in britain on may the 11th the next day let us know what you think of that little lineup that we've teased there what do you think about some of those stories just the, the way that they could be going with this it does sound like a russell t davis season doesn't it sarah <laughs> it, 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 it you know, does but, uh, you know, in the way that Okay, whether it appeals to us individually or not, mm -hmm. it does seem to have themes and a certain and a certain shape to it because this is the way that he tells stories. His previous four seasons were laid out, and he re would revisit characters and situations. That's more more what I mean. Yeah, no, it does, it, it, and it's it's on the it's all surface level. You know, if you squint, you, it, it it looks okay, and you're like, all right, this mm -hmm. this feels like Russell, but then you know when we the specials felt like Russell until you delved really into him, and then you found out that it wasn't it wasn't old Russell uh, at all. Um, yeah, this you know I'm not going to be churlish about it. There's there's potential, but there's uh, every time I see something that looks vaguely promising, it's weighed down with politics, politics. and ideology crap on it and it it's just getting me down and you know charlotte's been saying for weeks now but we don't <laughs> we don't know how it, it is you got that feeling of dread you don't know what's going to come on that screen yeah. and you, to, you don't know if it's going to be know. <laughs> it, it, it's and again you know and it, it's up to the individual if you can deal with that obviously ian can't and i completely get it love and it's i i haven't decided yet. you know what but, Sarah, I, 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 I sincerely say good luck to everyone. If this is 
what they want, <laughs> right? <laughs> if this is what they want and people embrace this, I'm happy yeah. for them. Do you know what I mean? I'm happy. But for me, this is not for me. Sorry. Yeah, I mean, it could be It could be that it does do well and it, it's just uh -huh. not for well, us anymore. And then it, if it does yeah. well, then, you know, bravo. It, and Dr. Hugh goes on. But I think I Disney's say. in trouble, yeah. though, don't they? And so is the BBC. Both both mm. huge parties that support mm. in this show. So yeah. I wouldn't be surprised after season two, it's, it's, it's going to, you know, stop. For a bit, do you know but what I mean? Because the, the thing know. that really hits me is, like you said, we've got Howard Saxon being mentioned. You've got Mel. You've got yeah. Unit. Yeah. You've got so many things that, for this so-called brand new audience, that some things are screaming they're trying to get. Yeah, you've got a lot of establishment stuff, which is just going to completely mm. fly over the heads. Yeah, I mean, you've called it series one for God's sake, but you've got so many past seasons in history that you need to just even get a tiny bit of understanding mm. because if Mel appears and she starts talking about what she did with, with Colin Baker's doctor, mm. you're going to be completely yeah, lost. Point. So yeah. it's like he, he can't do it both ways. Basically that's what, that's what screams to me more than anything. He's, he's trying to get those two audiences to coexist and that's not an easy feat. And he, he managed in 2005, but he did it because of the skill and the way that he very slowly introduced establishment stuff that somebody like me watching it when I was 11, I didn't know about the show's history. Mm. So the sort of the, the way he did the master back in then, I, I, I still think this day is brilliant because it was slowly like drop fed. Sort of you got a little bit and a little bit and then you got eventually the whole picture of what the master was. Mm. But I didn't need to watch classic mm. for me to understand that character. Mm. But I'll, but you need to to understand unit at this point to understand all those key well, characters. That there is used. the classic Doctor Who's they can all go back to and understand unit that way with Pertweed and Tom and you know what I mean all those wonderful stories and wonderful it, actors. You know they can go back. It, you know it does kind of feel like you know for all this. Oh, we want you a new young audience to keep chasing this audience. So it's yeah. like he it seems to be very. You know, heavily reliant on us lot, on the classic fan, you know, the long term fans. You could say and that. The new fans are like, well, maybe you shouldn't have alienated us, mate. I th obviously, we're only going to know. <laughs> we're only going to know how important it all is when the episodes begin to roll out, because just as, as Charlotte said, he did it deftly. 18, 17, 18, 19 years ago, he managed to. He did manage to um, sensitively drop nuggets of law in a way not to frighten the natives, not to frighten the normies and to mm. grow an audience. So maybe that's evaded him as well. Maybe he doesn't realise, yeah, maybe he doesn't realise quite how low Doctor Who's profile had sunk. I'm not entirely sure, but there's obviously there's something that we can be grateful for. That there's something missing that well, could have been. And it was... Russell, it was Russell, <laughs> <laughs> well, Russell, Russell T was responsible for bringing Doctor Who back to life. I hope he's not responsible for the person that destroys it and kills it do you know what i mean for everyone's sake do you know even if i'm not going to be watching this this uh, version of doctor who i hope that doctor who can still keep going do you know what i mean so when it when it does uh you know set back to how it's supposed to be that's when i'll join hopefully i'll be what maybe in my 90s oh, that's doctor who. Do you know what I mean? so, and i'll be watching it do you know what i mean so i just hope it goes back to how it's supposed to be personally me but you know it's the way it goes. Yeah, I, I, I do, I do see entirely. I do see entirely what you mean. Obviously, yeah. Doctor Who has been away before. We've seen, yes. you know, we've seen it go wrong, arguably twice before, but never this early. I personally, hold, I'm holding out hope. I'm going to wait until the summer until I, until I decide I'm going to actually watch the material and make up my, uh, my mind for myself. We're going to look at the trailer in a little while. Of course, we are. But before we get there. <laughs> Hello, my name is Ian Levine, and I'm proud that you're listening and watching the Doctor Who Type 40 podcast here on YouTube. Yeah, we told you we've got some great plans for 2024 here at Type 40. It's 
been at least started with our interview with Ian Levine. He's now up across all major podcatchers and podbean.com, our home feed, and of course the video version here, fully enhanced on the uh, Time Force YouTube channel. Uh, for yeah, for all the previous episodes as well, you can get our talk with Tony Jordan from a few weeks ago on the future of the Dwast, as well as the uh, one we did with Will Hadcroft talking about his fabulous audio. There. I know you, mate. I can't hear you. You you, you b- broke up really badly there, so you'll have okay. to say all that again, yeah. Not to worry. You're uh, back. You're back. back. Yeah, I'm, back. Right. I'm back now. Yeah. I'm back now. Okay. Yep, you are. Yeah. So uh basically we we, we talked- tried to get rid of you and it didn't work. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, yeah. So yeah, if you haven't heard it yet, you know, a lot of people are talking about this uh, interview with Ian Levine there. It's up on the podcatchers right now or you can get the video version here on the type 40 youtube channel and there's lots more on the way watch this space watch this time ah yes speaking of speaking of which i think it is kind of kind of that that time yes you may have uh, time to dive into the fridge to tear open some foil and chow down on a mouthful of your maltese or egg or, or whatever else seeing as it's easter we'll allow you a few moments either side of the ad break to reg- <laughs> regain your dignity uh, as ever this is chock full of golden moments faces and voices from tv's library of of the uh, of the lustful <laughs> We'll see you back here in a couple of minutes for more Type 40 Live. When I pay good money for saucepans, I expect them to last, don't you? Now, Presti's lifetime is guaranteed to last 10 years. And that means thousands of hours on your cooker and a lot of time in the washing up. That's why only Presti's lifetime have thicker stainless steel bodies, solid copper bottoms, and real tea candles. Excuse me. You can put the dinner on. I'll be home in 20 minutes. For looks that last, it's lifetime. Only from Prestige. Time is running out. Destiny of the Doctors is in your hands. In a game like nothing on Earth, with old enemies and new riddles. Doctor Who, Destiny of the Doctors. Out now on PC CD-ROM. It was only a question of time. Attention all Daleks, look for these special Doctor Who packs of Weetabix. Each one has one of these four Doctor Who action games, three of these stand-up figures, and a secret message from the Time Lords. We must capture these special packs of Weetabix and exterminate, exterminate, exterminate. Collect the special Doctor Who Weetabix packs and enjoy your daily wheat, while stocks last. Hey, this is Type 40 Live Doctor Who with the second half of our big Easter parade for for 2024. We're bringing it all out, waving it around a bit (laughs) and letting everybody... God. And letting everybody have their say here as ever. Shooty, yeah, I don't know what he's been eating. Looks like things have gone a bit nasty for the boy. <laughs> but uh, I, I'm glad to say that they're all back to here at the panel. Thank you for all your comments so far across YouTube, Rumble and Facebook there. There's lots more to get stuck into, of course. So keep it coming, everybody. Ha, 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 ha. Yes, so where were we? All new, all new Doctor Who season one. The first season of this second restart is set to premiere on the 11th of May, 2024. It's the 40th season of Doctor Who all in all. It's the fifth, but the, kind of the first to be showrun by Russell T. Davis, if you're following that so far. And the 14th since the show was brought back from the wilderness back in 2005. Now, Disney Plus have released a full trailer. They were the first to get the trailer out as well, would you believe? So this dropped on May... uh, No, it didn't. On March... (laughs) On March the 22nd, 
at 10 a.m. And, uh, yeah, the official Doctor Who YouTube channel got it two hours later. This is a sign of the times, isn't it, Charlotte? We get in the trailers two hours after Disney are. What's going on? Well, yeah, like we said last last week, it's very clear where priority is. So, of course, they're going to get the trailer first. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I've, I've always been a little reluctant to get too angry and sort of f- uh, flower my fist in the air about Disney. But I have to say, what with what with the news a couple of weeks ago and then this, Simon, just little things like them not dropping trailers at the same time, that wouldn't have made any difference, would it? Surely both channels get the trailers exactly the same time? <laughs> well, I, I think we can see the way this is going. I mean, to be honest, yeah. what really annoyed me is the first time I saw the trailer, when I caught the trailer, I, I, I didn't go looking for it. It was just the first time the trailer popped up in my newsfeed somewhere. I can't remember. It had got Disney stamped all over. It was Disney Presents Doctor Who, and it was di- the really? Disney logos in the bottom of it. And it just really, I know it's just a small thing, but it just, just there we go. That's what I'm yeah. talking about. And it just really, really rang called that it was disney presenting this trailer to me not not the bbc um and yeah as as a license fee payer i just find it really i don't know i can't put my finger on it i just find it irritating but we can see the way it's going um and and it was fairly obvious the way it would go a couple of years ago i still am mystified that anybody for a microsecond thought that disney wouldn't be um intrinsically involved in doctor who that they just sort of take it off the bbc in a, in a sealed paper bag and and then just pop it in the machine and play it it was never going to happen it was just never going to happen yeah mm, the mouse always wins sarah it seems yep. it's unfortunately so it seems yeah it is it's it's not just irritating it's galling that's because you know it's the british public that are paying now I know they've got the cash injection from Disney, yes, but you know it's supposed to be a British show, and yeah, it's just it's removing everything that's British about it. Well, it's a generic. I, you know me, I try, I try to resent being reactionary, Charlotte. You know, I hope that comes across. I mean, we have got messages in the live chat there about about rounded opinions here, getting every kind of viewpoint, and we do try to pride ourselves on being honest and open and being rounded and fair here at here at type 40 live but i i must say i am getting a little fed up of seeing that logo stamped everywhere and i hate to say it you know i've been pretty keen on shooting at whereas the doctor i'm starting to get a little fed up of seeing him grinning at me constantly <laughs> <laughs> He's got a very nice smile. That's probably it's, why. It, yeah. it's a, it is a lovely smile, and he he has he has got a, a lot of personal charm. But I think after two years of seeing it, I now just want him to just just be the doctor. Stop the poncing around. Just be the doctor. I, I think that's the problem at the moment. They're very clearly showing one aspect, front and center of his doctor. When we want a multifaceted, we want that layered character and because we haven't seen any episodes yet we can't you can change that. time is that a message you can change time you and you can change time well it's yeah i think that is it's very subtle but it's, it shouldn't uh, be it should be i mean you as don't regards, change well, time not one line I, I personally, I personally don't believe that rumor that you've heard, Ian. I mean, it, it could no, be, it just could a be rumor. true. Or, or if yeah, history no. has been changed, then I believe that the perhaps the mission, because obviously hist- we know that history has been changed, because that's what Mavity is about. And obviously they're going to have to change it back. Mm. And they're not just going to leave it. But I don't think the change to history has anything to do with with race. Myself, right, I gotcha. think that that sounds like. That sounds like it just sounds very, very goofy culture war nonsense. Well, but, it can't it can't be any goofier than bringing out a hammer and then slamming the tardis well, and no, making two tardis true. out. I mean, come on. Yeah, come and, on. and I was going to say, I, I think some of that is Disney also kind of to do with the song <laughs> when we get properly into the trailer. Well, that, well, this is, this is, is this the thing picking up picking up on what Sarah's just been saying, and all our concerns about this Americanization and a, a kind of the creeping shadow of the mouse. You know, the, the three circles. At least this, the trailer set to the David. Bowie's song "Changes." Simon came out in the early seventies, didn't it? Was certainly one of Bowie's standout 
yeah. singles from the Funky Dory album. You can't get much more British than Changes by David Bowie, surely. No, no you certainly can't. And I have to be honest, I, you know, I, I obviously punched the air when I heard uh, Changes because yeah. I'm a massive Bowie fan, massive. Um, and so I just it was fantastic to hear. It was a brilliant choice of music to go on this. Uh, whatever happens, whatever you think of the trailer, of the new series, whatever, it's a brilliant choice of music and it works very, very well. It works well with the visuals. It works well with the idea of, of Doctor Who just as a concept, as a show. Forget, you know, forget its current iteration. It, it changes is a perfect sort of theme for Doctor Who as a show. Um, and you're right, Dan, it just doesn't get any more British than Bowie. Um, so, yeah, yeah, I thought it was a good statement of, uh, of intent. My, my question would be, my question would therefore be, Simon, which came first? You know, looking to what Ian was speculating about, which is perfectly fair for, for him to speculate, speculate about that. But I would wonder, therefore, what came first? Was it the idea to promote this season of Doctor Who with a classic David Bowie track? And then, you know, oh, we can create a strap line around it. Or did the strap line, the tagline come first? And then, oh, we can use the Bowie song. I suppose it, when we know which came first, then we'll know where editorially it's, it's leaning, won't we? Yeah, it's of course we will. It, it, it's impossible to say. My, in all honesty, my gut feeling is that the strap line will have come first because I kind of feel that that's what they are preparing us for is change that we're going to have to like it or lump it it is going to change it's going to be different um it's not the old show that's why they're calling it season one um for better or worse it's not the old show that you've watched in the past but then as has already been said uh, you know this evening in the panel and if that's the case why are we talking about um saxon and why are we talking about unit and and, and so on and so forth so it, it feels like it's in a bit of a, of a crisis of identity it's trying to tell us that it's all going to change and it's all going to be so exciting and it's all going to be for the better um and by using such a well-known bowie track that sort of reinforces that uh, obviously only time will tell if that, it, if that actually yeah, works. I, I think it's the song that came first because Russell does thought that one of his hallmarks was using songs for certain scenes, you know, like, you know, the Britney Spears. If it, is, if it is the song, the, if it is the song, then, know, then, the then, that, then I believe, if it is the song, then I believe that's pretty good news. I mean, I... I, f I think this is a fantastic song. I think it's absolutely right for Doctor Who. I think it's very, very British. And you and I agree with you about this suiting the visuals, Simon. And we've got visuals from, I, as I understand it, from every single episode. Some more than most, more than others, sorry, are in this trailer. But let's let's take you, Charlotte. What did you think of this of this trailer as trailers go? We've seen 101 of them now of Doctor Who. Some some good, some bad, some ugly. Did this, you know, the music, the visuals, everything in it. Are these characters that we barely know, has this sold you? Are you counting the weeks now? And does, is this a good trailer, do you think? I would say as a trailer in isolation, I quite enjoyed it. And just as a taster for what we could possibly get, I think it actually did quite a good job because it showed quite a varying amount of locations and settings. And I feel like sometimes Dot 2 in the past, and I think all showrunners were guilty of this, You've got a TARDIS, you've got space, you've got time. You could go anywhere with this show and they keep it on Earth or they keep it very what they could basically afford. Whereas at least this trailer, I felt like you, you're getting dinosaurs, you're getting space, you're getting... You get the length, of, the length and breadth of the universe. Yeah. Like you're backwards and forwards in time, you, out in space or, 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 the, or the, the, uh, the flat round the corner. You get it all. Yeah, you really get, and I wanted Doctor Who to finally embrace, sort of really play with that finally, because I thought it's just always been there, but never used fully. And I want spoken. that. So you, and I have, you and I have spoken in the past, haven't we, Charlotte, about, about these trailers, particularly during the Matt Smith era. Some of them are quite stylized, and they're very much sort of around ideas more so. And then you've got stuff like this, which is a clips package with a lot of momentum and bang, 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 bang. They're two completely different approaches, but there's no wrong answer i suppose neither of them are wrong it's just you can get a little bored of both when you see both too much yeah but i think honestly this has got a bit of both worlds because okay. you sort of see the character stuff here with him saying to ruby's mum i'll keep her safe and ruby saying oh now i know what my life's for so you're sort of getting a bit of character stuff for ruby here which was nice to see 
Yeah, I like and that, that as well. That idea of him taking responsibility for her with her mum, sort of. And what I, what I do like about Shooty, I agree what you sort of joked about, always grinning all the time. But I think this trailer actually had some loved, some quite serious moments for him, which is what I think they yeah. need to start showing more. Yeah. They really need to start showcasing the, what this actor can do. He's not just charm. He needs so when he was sort of saying, like I said to the mum, I'll look after her, or when they were seeing whatever that sort of the world ending almost scene was when he's holding her, you could tell he was a bit sh- like shocked by that so it was lovely to see those little character bits the only because you do worry you can't ever worry based on what we've seen so far i suppose has the actor got the range to play the part because we we saw that with the last person who who, uh, who allegedly played it for for two and a half seasons they didn't have any range at all they never remotely came close to to filling the role so no. these are the things that we look for these are the markers this is this is what we want oh yeah we've like it's we want to see this this sort of really established actor that he can do it basically that he can be the doctor he can be those layers but the only little thing that is a niggle is some of it is 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 jinx the more we've actually seen of jinx in this trailer the fact that she's literally making music notes appear on the screen and my fear is having sort of an over the top character it's such a fine line to try. That's why I, Charlotte. That's why I can't stand musical episodes. Of any, the only thing that's ever done it properly, that's ever done it in any kind of, any kind of edifying way, was Buffy the Vampire Slayer twenty years ago. Everybody who's done it since, it's always been awful, and I don't expect Doctor Who to be any any different. I mean, yeah, I did like well. what I did like about this was that we got uh, Ruby doing uh, a voiceover to a lot of it. It reminded me of of the. Uh, trailers from 20 years ago with Rose Tyler, you know, should I pack in my job to go off with this guy? That that kind of thing. Ian, given the fact you're really down on this, you looks like you're not going to watch it. Have you, have you seen the trailer? I saw the trailer, yeah. Um, what did you think? Visual effects are really good. Um, they looks like they put a lot of money into making it look, you know, bigger than, you know, bigger than the previous Doctor Who's and stuff. In fact, it looks just as good as the uh, majority of, uh, I guess, Matt Smith's era. But quite frankly... I don't think Shooty's got the got the acting chops to be the Doctor personally. Um, from the very little I've seen in the trailer, also the very little I've seen him in in the Christmas special, um, they do reinforce the idea that the Doctor is gay, obviously, because they got him dancing in the club they? in the middle. Well, well, they're, they're pushing the agenda, in other words. So basically, the uh, they have him dancing in the car halfway through this trailer, which I I found no point. What, why would you have that clip? Is this in what there, they but... call being being? Uh, it's coded. Is that that's the expression I see? Well, I don't know, mate. Because look, I really don't care. <laughs> tell you the truth, <laughs> you know what? Um, it as I said, the only good thing about this trailer is the visual effects. The sets are fantastic as well. You know, it, 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 any other doctor, if it was this any other era, I'd be really excited. I'd be counting the days, the minutes, and the seconds. But I can't. I can't not for this version. <laughs> No, I'm sorry. I mean, I'd like to have seen more of of the Doctor in this and got more of a feel for the character. But I suppose it is a it, they've gone down the clips package route with this because they're selling the whole show rather than just him. But, but it's nearly two but, years since he was cast, yeah, so just, Ian, I need to see more. Yeah, but there's just little things that really bother me. Like for instance, the TARDIS flying into um, what is it? Uh, uh, Unit uh, HQ. Unit HQ. He can meet he can that, that thing can materialize. Why why is it flying almost killing someone I crashing through the of, thing? It, it just part of a story. It yeah, just it doesn't be fair. Yeah, I know, but still it though, if it if all right, if it isn't part of the story and you watch why it, does the TARDIS part, why does it do that? Why would why you do the, that? Why does the TARDIS sort of fly down the motorway in the runaway bride? No, it's well, it, no, it's because it that, looks good. It, it no, looks no, no. Green. There was a reason for him to do that because he wanted to get her out of the taxi, right? So yeah, the there probably is. But there is no, reason. but there's no particularly good reason why it flies in in the beginning of Christmas Invasion. There's no reason there. Yeah. So I, I must be honest that that doesn't worry me. And that's that's I have to be honest. That's the kind of the least of my my personal <laughs> worries. <laughs> All right. I mean, I, w- I would agree with you, Ian. I, well, I'd, agree- I'd disagree with you, Dan. I don't see any more of the Doctor. I have to be honest. I see too much of him <laughs> in this. I, I'm really not warming to this. I'm afraid this this version of the Doctor. Yeah. I, I'm hoping I'm pleasantly surprised. 
I do agree with Ian. I'm not yet remotely convinced that this guy has the acting chops, the gravitas to pull this role off. It's beginning to look very much like Hollyoaks in space to me. It, <laughs> I wouldn't go that far. You know, it, it just looks very lightweight. I'm sure he's a cracking actor for certain roles, uh, which he would basically be Hollyoaks. You know, that's the kind of stuff I would put him in. I don't, I'm not saying he hasn't. I'm just saying so far I haven't seen the well, gravitas required the for this role. This is the problem, isn't it? We're, they're both very pretty. Uh, 20 years ago, I don't want to sound like a stock record, 20 years ago, Billy Piper, a striking-looking girl, beautiful, very distinctive, very attractive, traditionally attractive, uh, the blonde, the, the blonde hair, the tan. But then you've got Christopher Eccleston, who I know I, I know there's a lot of a lot of people have crushes on the Ninth Doctor. Uh, ladies as well as gentlemen have crushes, crushes on that character. But he's got big ears, he's got a big nose. <laughs> you know, he's he's not conventionally good looking. Shooty is a, is a, a strikingly good looking man. Oh, very good so, looking. Very good looking. And so I, I do I do see what you mean. And and I mean I do like that we see him snarling a bit in this Sarah but the the things that Simon and Ian are pointing to are more than fair aren't they they well I'm sorry to say this trailer's left me completely cold uh I don't hate it I don't love it either it's just I I'm baffled that these are the best bits that they've put together in the clips package to entice us and I went back and watched previous trailers and I do see what you're saying about things being very much stylized, especially the Matt Smith era. But there was just so much more excitement. There was the monsters. There was that, that sense of threat, the music. It all just seemed much more grown up. We got we got glimpses of the guest cast. If you remember that Series 5 trailer in particular. I'm just seeing nothing. And I'm certainly not seeing the Doctor. I'm fed up with him just grinning like an idiot. He got... He seemed there's no gravitas, there's no moments. If you again, if you remember in the series five trailer, there was that wonderful Matt Smith speech at the end where he says, There's one thing you never put in a trap, me. And it oof, it got it, it got it there yeah, and then, I love even that. though he was such a young actor at the time. I think the problem is, Shooty is he's too conventionally good looking. It's too contemporary. It just looks like a contemporary blow. Yeah, it does. Contem but Sarah, he looks yeah. he looks so the thing is he look it's not just his looks. David Tennant's a good looking man. Matt Smith is a good a good looking man. Actually, Matt Smith was kind of unconventional as well. But David Tennant was, <laughs> was Yeah, yeah. David Tennant is certainly good looking. But but the what they did very uh carefully with the tenth doctor, particularly at the beginning, is that there was a lot of fragility to him still. Yeah. The, whereas this doctor seems like mega mega confident and i mean but oh. we, we barely know him this could be unfair because obviously we've we've it only just met unfair. him unfair it could be a lot of swagger it, 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 it just seems too cool the doctor shouldn't be the doctor should be uncool he shouldn't he should be a man that's out of time Matt it Smith doesn't got look it. like bang on hit that it doesn't look like perfectly. it doesn't look like a man out of time he looks far too cool his clothes are too cool too modern too fashionable I do, one thing I will say, they have got excellent chemistry between it. You can tell they're good mates and it's kind of, it just feels more like a buddy that's what, pull, that's what pulls me through. I agree with I agree with everything Simon said that to young pretty people, but because they do they do have chemistry. We saw that at Christmas. Therefore, I am sort of invested. Electric Ball asks, "What does Uber Gay mean?" I have absolutely no idea. Is it is it an energy drink of some sort? <laughs> it's, a, it's a driver that picks you up. You know, is there, <laughs> that's what it is. yeah. I think Ruby, Ruby comes off a lot, but I, I think I'm one of the few people who didn't warm to Ruby at the Christmas one. I didn't think she acted like a human being at all. She didn't. No, in I next agree. one, in this one, she her response the monster when she screams. Um, that's how I that know. Was, that's that was how the, the bogeyman they're gonna they're yeah, gonna meet in episode how, one. The call that's of the how she should have reacted to seeing the goblins. Yes. Yes. And that fantastical, not the, did you just hit at me? Like, shut up, yeah. woman. Um, now, that's just not how you would act. But, um, if, and... I've, if I've got a concern, Sarah, at the moment, it's that the 
I, I am starting to worry after two years since he was cast that rather than Shooty Gatwa becoming the Doctor, that the Doctor has become Shooty Gatwa. That's yeah. what's starting. I think to that's. Niggle. I think that's perfectly that's reasonable. Fair. I think that's starting that's to fair. niggle that's me. Fair. Yeah. Niggle me just a little. Um, but I think. But but I, to be honest, hasn't that always been sort of fairly obvious, Dan? I think that's been obvious since day know. one because because you, you know we've seen so many photos of Shooty being Shooty um, far more than any any other Doctor. That's true. Um, and, that and so and so that's always been the case. And and you know when you, uh, in the very first thing I think. That, that he does in the trailer when he comes out the TARDIS and says, "Show me the love" or whatever it is, it's just it's just Shooty Gatwa. It's not the Doctor that I'm looking at there. It's it's Shooty Gatwa. It's some cool guy because he is a cool guy. He's a really oh, yeah. cool, good-looking yeah. guy. That you know, that's absolutely undeniable. But that's who I'm looking at there, not the Doctor. So this is simply, it's just I think so far, and as I say, of course, we, we we're prepared to be proven wrong on this. But so far, from what I've seen, this looks like just it's a different show. It's not Doctor Who as we know it. And that's fine. But I just I'm just like, well, why call it Doctor Who then? If you want to do this show, go and do it, but leave Doctor Who to be Doctor Who. I, I I don't get why we can't do that. I don't get why we've got to reinvent Doctor Who to this extent to turn it into something that it wasn't before. Just do that show if you want to. I can't help but think now what you guys are saying. Mm. Are we actually really seeing the impact of him not having a set costume as well now? I think that's a massive thing, Charlotte. Because massive. I think so, yeah. Well, now, because that... when we were just seeing it in pictures, like as set things, it was it's hard to read them anyway set pictures and you can't really get a feel now we've seen it in a condensed like you said a clip show type of trailer now we're actually seeing new outfit nearly every story actually yeah not in real time but as, before we watch it actually and, this is the closest we're going to get yeah and that's what's beginning to look like Hollyoaks in space to me that's what it looks like i mean that's, for, that's for all my, i'm thinking now I'm that's that's really hitting us yeah now I mean, I just want to uh, go in round the panel. I mean, I think it's safe to say that uh, Ian, mm. technically, see you appreciate this trailer, uh, but Sarah yeah. and Simon, just well, you're not on board with this. Well, no, actually, to, to be you. fair, to be fair, I would like to say I think the trailer is fantastic. I think it's actually a really good trailer. But the problem is, as I've said so many times on these shows, it's very, very easy to cut together a few clips into two minutes of TV time and put a good yeah, Bowie yeah. track on the top of it and make it look good. It's the easy... Cutting a trailer is not easy. It's an art. Of course it is. But what I mean is, if you are good at your art of cutting a trailer, making a dog's dinner look good is the easiest thing in the world to do. And so that's why we simply can't tell from looking at this trailer what it's going to be like. I thought the trailer was fantastic. Yeah, do but I have confidence? So the show will be fantastic. No, it hasn't given me any confidence in that because it's just a yeah. good trailer. At the end of the day. Matthew, 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 Matthew Simon. So, so can I just say that, that Simon, what I, think, I can't remember if it was Sarah or, or Charlotte said, comparing that tra this trailer to the one with Matt Smith, it the, that trailer told the story. The one with the Matt Smith, it told you mm. this is new Doctor. This is what's going to happen. Blah blah blah. And here we are. This is the Doctor, and he points the gun, and you know, and he says that line, and then you're in. You're like, I want to see this. But oh, I this. agree with you there. Yeah. Oh no, you're but, right there. But what I'm trying, what I'm trying to say is visually, visually, yeah, 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 yeah. And with yeah, sound but, design, it's wor it works from yeah, that but, point of view. But with this, this doesn't tell a story. All it tells you is here's a bit, here's a bit, here's a bit, here's a bit, here's a bit. Do you, do you understand? So it's a, it's a, it's a trailer. It's basically just a trailer no, showing you. No, I don't it's need not, a story. No. It's not. It's not telling. I don't think it's telling us a story, but I do think it's mm. kind of trying to tell us who the Doctor is and that he's a man who can who who walks through eternity. I think that's what they're leaning on. This idea that he can go from from time and place and place and time and kind of fit in but not fit in. I think that's the version of the character they're trying to tap into with this. That's what I I'm picking up from. I mean Matthew Pounder in the live chat here says it had no atmosphere. I I disagree. Yes. Um, Same. I, Actually, I, I, I think, think it had loads of atmosphere i mean i just want to oh, clarify okay. i thought this trailer was absolutely fantastic electrifying oh my God, i loved <laughs> I, I loved i loved every second of this i thought it was fantastic really? Seriously. no i can I, see why you did i can't see why you did i can't exactly I, I, I just uh, again try try 
the trailer based on, again, the choice, the images, the music, the feel and the energy of it. This It felt like a refreshed version of the series that I've always loved. I thought this was electrifying as trailers go. Are you I, sure I really you watched in the right trailer? <laughs> it brought me... It, it, I, th- I thought it was joyous. I really, really, really? did. My, the only thing, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, this is me having my, so this is my I opinion. I know, I know. Go but for it. The, uh, the yeah. only thing, the, the only thing that's in the back of my mind is this thing about the Doctor. I, again, he was, cast, he was cast nearly two years ago. We've seen so, so little. Mm. And uh, I, I, just want, I just want them to stop teasing. The trailer to the 60th specials was also brilliant and electrifying and joyous. And although it delivered for me mostly, it didn't for most people. And taking myself out of the equation, they can't repeat Whatever the blend was they did four or five months ago, they can't do that again because it needs to hit squarely every single week. Now, I I, I agree with you, Simon. I think I, I think it was a fantastic trailer. For me, this is to my taste. This is what I want of Doctor Who now and moving forward. Don't know about the central character yet. We, we will see. I've got some very strange comments from a John Smith in the live chat. I'm not sure if this is a parody account or, or what, um, but uh, this has got to be a troll or something like that. I don't know because yeah, I'm certainly not going to rise to that nonsense. Uh, Heretic says that uh, my other half is a massive Buffy fan, so she agrees with you about the musical episodes. I'm not getting many musical fans in the live chat. Uh, John agrees with you 100%, Ian. Um, you're not going to change my <laughs> mind, says Holden 190. I don't want to watch a gay a gay doctor see i can see some i yes it does look obviously he plays it kind of camp but I do think it's unfair to to stamp on this incarnation gay doctor i think that's unfair well, but the suppose... only thing, well, well the only thing that i would come back on that and say is that we were very squarely led to believe in the wild blue yonder that the doctor is now gay that was yeah. that was yeah. very clearly made uh, uh, and, mm. and and you know as as a gay man it's of no interest to me i do not want a gay doctor i don't want a sexualize doctor thank you very much i just do yeah. not want yeah. sexualized doctor on any level thank, thank you, you very much I agree. I, I agree. agree with you, Dan. What I quite liked was adventure. That's the sense That's I got I of just mm-hmm. two mates who the doctor sort of, he says at the beginning, oh, I can see all the world, but I'm yeah. alone or something. I can't remember the exact wording. So it's this idea of the doctor just loving the world still, having that glint in his eye, but wanting to share it. Yeah, and the universe, the universe opening up for Ruby, the same way it did for Rose, yes. nearly, nearly well, 20 years ago. I like, I what it that's the vibes me. I got. And- I like the sentiment, but I, 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 I didn't believe him when he said when he delivered the lines. It yeah. didn't sound like... Yeah, it, yeah this is my problem. I, I, that's the thing. I'm not sure I did either, and I really want to like this incarnation. Mm-hmm. I want to be on, on board with it because I did. I have seen a, a certain amount that I've liked so far, and there's been incarnations of the Doctor that I've warmed to quick, uh, quicker than others. I'll tell, you, uh, I'll tell you what the big problem is, though. Ruby looks fantastic in this trailer. I love that. You know the edit where it goes through different versions of her? I think... They've made a massive mistake getting rid of her. I just, I, well, I think she's going to be the glue that holds yeah. the series together, and I think they're doomed when she's gone. I, mean, uh, I hope Gat- I'm wrong. Matthew Pounder says Gat was more annoying than Jodie. Come on, Matthew. Oh, Matthew. Well, no, I, I must be honest. I'm, I'm kind of, oh, I'm ver- veering towards Matthew. I am actually finding him an irritating now. Oh, yeah. Say sorry. At least he can run. Compared to compared to Jody, <laughs> though, com- think about what he's saying. Jody Whitaker. I don't know. Maybe. Well, maybe I've just sort of blanked my memory a bit with Jody. But all I will say is, I am. I'm sorry. I am beginning to find him extremely irritating. Sorry. I, I'm. I'd like to see him not grinning. I. I. I, I admit. I'd like there to see. Were him shots not where he wasn't grinning, Dan. Uh, Dan. There were shots in that trailer where he, not like, where he was scared of the monster, and he was like acting yeah. like. Ooh. That kind of thing, yeah. like the and, bit first and I do, off. I do like it when he snarls. I, I, I do. I, I was feeling yeah. that, and we, we also had well, a moment I don't know, where I don't. it looks like Scrappy Doo. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. I don't. I don't. I don't. Oh no! This is a, this is a great. <laughs> Seriously, I'm sorry. This is a, it's a great shot. Scrappy Doo. <laughs> this is a great shot as well of him screaming out of the TARDIS. I, I love that. It's very Twelfth Doctor. I, oh, I love that God, as well, no. but. Again, I just need. Well, I just need. Huge, this, it, Dan? I mean, you the thing—the I mean? thing that 
Well, the thing that I picked up on this, and the thing that I'm sort of taking from it, is uh, I'm again, they, in my view, they are pitching this as the the man who goes from place to place and space to place and time to time, and it, this is you you go with him, you go on this journey, and you know, like when he takes her to the Regency period, and she says, "Oh my Bridgerton!" Like I, I love the fact that they chime with popular culture. Bridgerton's a, a huge show. There aren't many girls of Ruby's age who don't watch Bridgerton. It's absolutely yeah. right to lean on that. It's brilliant. It's fine. But the thing that I also picked up was, and this is this chimes back to the picture that we had at the, at the start of the show with the Doctor in all the various hats. It reminds me of the Doctor at various points in his lives, where, for example, the first Doctor in the Romans he would wear a uh, a toga mm -hmm. to when he was pretending to be Maxim Maxim Maximus Platullian, the uh, the lute player and things like that. And then it, when he, in the gunfighters, he's got the cowboy hat on with the gun belt and and he was there with the with the sort of string tie and all that kind of thing. I do like that side to the Doctor. For all that I've said about silhouettes and and about costumes, uh, clothes rather than costumes, I do actually from that trailer. Even everything I've said about them changing the costumes, that trailer kind of sold me on it. The only thing that I'm not buying, funnily enough, is this sort of uh, kind of Magic Mike look with the leather jacket and the tight jeans. I don't. That's the only thing. Everything else, I like the idea that wherever he goes, it's okay. Let's dress up and see if we can fit in and have a bloody good time. Do you, because I think that other doctors, particularly the first and second doctors did kind of do that. I, I should like a hat like that. I'll try that hat. Yeah. I know this could be a deep dive and it may even be a reach, but I yeah. think if they want to, if they want to hang, if they want to kind of not redefine this character, but kind of re-offer it to the current generation, then looking back to that idea, it's not, well, I, don't but then, it's a, I don't think it's a no, faulty one. I think it's a, I think it's a, a bit of a, a far reach to say that Hartnell and Troughton changed costumes. They didn't. They always wore pretty much yeah, exactly the same costume. Yeah. They were just variations. Same as Pertwee. And I've seen Pertwee mentioned in the chat this evening saying Pertwee changed costume. Yeah, of course he did. He had a different colour jacket on each week. That was about, that was about was it. It was still the same, wasn't it? It was still the same silhouette. It was still the same style. And so I, it's a fair point, Dan, if, they, if, that, if that's what they're trying to do. But yet again, I come back to my... Then, though, back then, though, Simon, stories were four or six episodes sometimes between two hours and three hours long this is just 50 minutes no i know but the point being that they say they did hart and Troughton did have the same costume throughout it was just a variation on they again they might have worn a slightly different waistcoat or a slightly different jacket but it was primarily the same outfit um, and it's fine again there's nothing wrong with with going down, down this route if they want to go down the route of a different costume every week but it does turn it into something that's not doctor who and so as i keep saying it that's fine it. but just don't call it doctor who it sort of turns it into Mr. B into a live action Mr. Ben. We've got a comment here yeah. from John Smith again. Maybe I call it Mr. Guys... Ben. <laughs> maybe, Dr. Ben. Maybe, maybe you guys should find something else to do with your time if you're not going to watch it. There's only one of us who claims they're not going to watch it. I will. It. <laughs> the, rest of us, the rest of us are watching it, John. We're, we're Doctor Who. We talk about Doctor Who. We speculate. And we have fun. That's what we do here, John. But thanks yeah. for the comment. You're welcome to remain. But this is kind of what we do. Uh, Gaz, the man, says, I'm worried they haven't given him a Matt Smith speech or monologue. I hope he has it in him. You know what? I'm so sick of the speeches. I don't want any more speeches. I just want acting. I want characterization. That's yeah, I think I I'd agree with you, Dan, on that. Yeah, and I, and I do think if they put that in a trailer, it would look a little bit trying too hard. It'd put me off. It, it would be. Oh, like, oh, look, he's got a speech, folks. Look, he's got a speech. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I just, I think in his first episode or two, like I said, he just needs to set show basically what's the thing with the Doctor. They've always got a surface level personality. And it's what I love about this character. So with Max, for example, it's the goofiness. Mm -hmm. It's the childishness. That's his surface personality. But if you dig deep, actually, Matt's doctor's very emotional. He, he, he sort of gets hurt. He cares an awful lot about things. But the thing that's really deep down is, God, he can be a nasty piece of work, Matt. Matt, yeah, the 11th doctor, be, yeah. on the wrong side of him. And mm -hmm. that's, but that, 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 that has to, that's not surface. Sean, so, do you think? Do you think that? Do you think is your instinct that Shooty Gat was got that in him to bring that out? I don't know yet, honestly. Really? I think it wouldn't be fair to say that yet. 
because I think even Matt, I'm in the eleventh hour. You saw the steeliness of Matt near the end, but you didn't see, like I said, that nastiness, and that's what it is, and that's what I adore about Matt. Yeah. I've always said yeah. one of the doctors I don't want to get on the wrong side of is the eleventh doctor. Yeah, all right. That's why it took me till the beast below. You remember at the end yeah, of beast that, below yeah, when, he, one, yeah. when he snaps yeah. and says, "Nobody human has anything yeah. to say to me today." Yes. It's just angry. Yeah, it's that fabulous. It, and yet he needs. Yeah, but it's the writing, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's 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 yeah. it's going to be in the writing. If if they want Shooter to be good, he's got to have the the the, the acting power to pull off some really good writing, right? And we don't know. You guys don't know if that's gonna gonna happen. The, the other thing, the other thing that strikes me with this with this picture that you've got up now, Dan. This was one of the things that I was talking about with the costume. Now, this episode, from what we can see, this is the one where basically the world has completely collapsed and we're in a yeah. post-apocalyptic nightmare and yet he's standing in a goofy afro wig and a zoot suit <laughs> you can't take the, the two don't work together you can't you look at you look at for example tom baker in his final season that has been sort of noted as being funereal and it works the costume works in sync with the story that they're telling you can't put shooty in a comedy costume like that and then try and tell a world has gone to crap storyline that it doesn't work. I, I, you, you know, I, 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 I don't know what they're trying to do with this. I don't know who they're aiming this at. I hope they know who they're aiming it at. And I hope it comes into sharp focus. But looking well, well, at the trailer, it looks contradictory to me. It looks in crisis. Well, to, to, to be fair, right, to be fair, right, um, we're all speculating, right? Of course Everything we that we're saying is based on the trailer. So yeah. you never know. I might be 100% wrong about Shooty. The, the episode with the world's end, you guys all might end up crying and this performance might be really brilliant. And, you know, it all might, you know, come to a point where you think, wow, you know, we were wrong about Shooty. We were wrong about this Doctor Who. Yeah. It could be. But then again, right, we are here to speculate like for, we are here to speculate the trailer. And that's what we're doing. Yeah. So that's it's all we can do at the moment. Yeah, exactly. Last week, last week, a couple of people got a bit cross with me for suggesting that the second episode could overshadow the first. I feel vindicated by the fact that the promo posters for the launch uh, all feature imagery from episode two. Nothing from episode one. It's all, yeah, Simon, that afro. That zoot suit, mm -hmm. uh, nearly in the sixties, in the sixties gear, the Mary Quant look. I mean, it's a stunning look for both of them. Yeah, it's brilliant. But, but I do think that they are the the Eurovision stick. Uh, shtick. They're uh, double billing it with Eurovision, leaning into that crowd. I mean, obviously that is a a very camp and very gay interest field. The general British public resent and detest the Eurovision Song Contest. I believe that could backfire on them. But th th it's as if they're not interested in episode one at all. They just want to get to episode two with with all the singing and the dancing and all the rest of it, which, is, in my view, is the one that could, could tune people off. So I, I consider myself well vindicated by, well, by this. I hate to say it. Uh, we've mm. had a comment here from Philip Roy, uh, the doctor. <laughs> Dr. Roy, in the live chat, he says, at least you won't have to worry about the Doctor being too good looking when you get to reviewing <laughs> my Doctor Who meets the Scorpion trailer. And we, I, we played your teaser I twice this evening. Yeah, Phil, 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 we're looking forward to it, mate. We really are. I am looking we are, forward Phil. to it. Yeah, yeah, we I'm are. Looking forward <laughs> to it. Uh, yeah. Holden 190 is on Team Ian. Oh, cool. I think that means he's out. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Ezra Goldstein says the doctor is a middle aged eccentric British man, period. He is. He yeah, is. correct. Oh, oh, generally yeah. speaking, generally speaking, agree. I mean, middle aged, it depends on. I mean, I know a lot of people in their but 20s not, who behave well, middle aged. Yeah, I mean, look at Matt. Matt was so youthful, but yes. his eyes said it all. He, he convinced you that it was ancient. I'm not, I'm still not seeing that with Shooty. That's another yeah. thing. He's got to prove the age, the wisdom, and the alienness. I'm just all I'm getting is cool dude. That's very. He's definitely got the eccentric. I think he's maybe too eccentric. He seems to be too quirky for his own good. But we'll see. We'll see how it plays maybe, out. Maybe anybody who thinks this is this looks looks bad, you know, say good luck. <laughs> <laughs> good luck. <laughs> good. I saw this image earlier in the week, and it reminded me that what, however, whatever you think of that trailer, things could could be worse. So these people were spotted 
It's again. worse. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> so this is uh, yeah. That, so they're at one of those sort of TV industry rub and tug events. Good Russell luck. T Davis with Jodie Whittaker and Mark Gatiss them having some sort of smog off. I mean, you know. So <laughs> at yeah, least, pass the bucket. Yeah, <laughs> at least this. At least this oh, isn't God. isn't present. You need me to drink now. Cheers. Yeah, oh. yeah, and I think yeah. <laughs> and I was just about to say, Dan, you picked the best moments for me to say. I need to go. Are you good? Are you good? Are you good that you listen? <laughs> yeah, Charlotte. Uh, thanks for your company and your input <laughs> as. Ever. Uh, obviously, it's been uh, next week. Uh, we won't see you next week. No. You're offered a, a really important family event, aren't you? And, you know, best of luck to all of you and yours there for this fabulous occasion. And we'll be, we'll be thinking of you. Hope, hope it all goes really, really well. And we'll see you back after the break. Yeah, yeah good I'll luck. See you guys, like I said, after my fun family event next week. So <laughs> bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye. Bye bye. Hey. <laughs> Good luck, yeah, she's got, she's gone off to dance to the trailer back there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. So uh, yeah, I was a little bit as well thrown by this. Uh, give, give me the oh. loving. Yeah, that really. That's the moment that it lost me. Literally, that's well, the moment and, it lost me. And then he I mean, hugs the person that's pretending to be a fifteen-year-old. There, there you go. So. What does he mean? What, what does he? Mean? <laughs> well, it's just, it's just to me. I don't know. It smacks of just smugness. It's just like here I am. Everybody loves me. Uh, it's just an unpleasant thing for the doctor. To what me. are you talking about? It doesn't chime in what's just happened. Like what well, Ian, you made a very good point when you were saying about how the TARDIS comes crashing in. That gives you that sense of urgency. So you expect him to come running out. Oh, yeah. I'm coming to save the world. Not. Give me some loving, yeah. Yeah, just, just a very... quick wash from the. Mm -hmm. uh... Yeah. No, it's just very, odd. very odd. Uh, yeah, it does seem people, I have to say, but it's, it's uh, a divisive trailer. I think it, what's clear to me reading some of the comments in the live chat is mm. that a lot of people are, are feeling similar to how Ian is. Uh, it, it has it has to be said. Some people are out on principle. Uh, Matthew Pounder, the doctor shouldn't be shaking his booty. Oh, the doctor's had a, a, a the doctor dances. The doctor does dance. We've seen the doctor dance several times. Yeah, we have. Yeah. Um, but, but, but but honestly, um, Dan, for me, right, this whole thing it just feels wrong. Uh, Shooty being cast as the doctor, the whole setup of what this do new Doctor Who it feels wrong. In, in, in my heart, it feels mm. wrong. And you know what, right? I need some super glue because my heart is broken yet again. I want to, uh, you know, I, I can't go forward with this because I think it's all wrong, personally. But See, again, for, you know, people for me, like, for me, like it. Just, it does feel like Doctor Who. I, I just me. feel like I just wonder now. Uh, I've always felt that, the, that they hadn't, that it was likely that they'd cast the role well. But it's just, again, it's having gone for two years we, when all we've really seen is a load of pictures of him grinning and one episode at Christmas where, you know, he was barely sort of warmed up in many respects. We have seen him, but we haven't. It's yeah. There were yeah, so it, many candidates that were up to play the Doctor yeah. and they went with Shooty. They went with Silly Gatwick, for God's sakes. Why, why did they do that? I have no idea uh, why they Matthew did that. Matthew Pounder just, uh, says that he it. always gives gives it a few episodes. Yeah, um, me too, Matthew. That's what I'm going to do. I'll give it a few episodes, but I, I'm not promising not a chance. to the end. If it doesn't work for me, I'm not sticking to the end. Well, I, mm. I showed the trailer to both my boys, and they're both out. So if I do watch it, I'll be watching it on my own. Um, mm. My 11-year-old... He doesn't like Disney. He said it's too babyish. And with <laughs> the tone of it, I see his point. Um, my older child, who's 15, said mm. it's too gay and it's too cringe. And he said no self-respecting teenager at school would watch it. Oh, dear. Oh, Lord. No. Yeah. Oh, um, but, yeah, I, I, I mean, that's just their opinions. But, yeah, I mean, my Joshy. And, and as I was saying before... Um, they both sat and watched the arc with me the other day. Mm. Yeah. Uh, I'd, got, I'd got it on. They came in with the phones. They were waiting for me to finish so I could go on Xbox. And they both solely just got sucked into it. Um, mm. so, yeah, and that's, and that's you know, from 1966. So, oh. yeah. 
trailer's yeah. doing very, very well, particularly on the Disney Plus channel. 4.6 million views uh, mm-hmm. just after the first four days compared to when, when we look down to what the uh, anniversary specials trailer got mm-hmm. five months ago. That's still sat there at 690,000 wow. views. So uh, uh, do, you, do you think the reason why it got so many views is mm-hmm. because of, you know, like all that people like us wanted to see what the trailer was, you know what I mean? I mean, it not doesn't necessarily equate to how many people's going to be watching it or maybe, or but I think looking in it, context you know? with the previous ones, though, I mean, that would yeah. have been the same. Would have been the same for the Christmas one, and the wouldn't it? Well, I, no, I, I I guess you're right. I don't know. No, because Disney Plus didn't question. didn't publicise the specials, did they? I did they, they? they bear, yeah, they barely publicised any of the specials, including the Christmas one. Mm. Oh, it's it's definitely received a signal boost, but again, whether that actually translates to... Uh, Can I I literally say to the people out there, please do not get too upset over this. Seriously, I know you love Doctor Who. Seriously, it's just a TV show, right? We're all passionate about it, but there's 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 nothing in this world that has a reason for you to get upset about this. Seriously, it is it is what it is, you know? A lot of people didn't like Sylvester McCoy when he started. A lot of people didn't like Colin Baker. Do you know what I mean? But the thing about Doctor Who is it always bounces back. It always keeps coming. It keeps coming. It's like a bad penny. <laughs> it just keeps coming. Yeah, it, it, so it, 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 I'm hoping. You know? These are only, they're only our opinions. You can exactly. agree or exactly. disagree. This. Yeah, it's not worth getting upset about. It really isn't. And but... if you disagree with us, that's fine too. I don't care if you agree with me it doesn't it, it shouldn't bother you either you know it's great to debate though that's that's yeah. the thing. oh yeah great to debate, and so. when the going gets tough you can always well break out one of these guys. <laughs> <laughs> that's one what of I, them what i firmly <laughs> believe of course there was there was kind of something for everybody in that trailer i don't know if you spotted this simon uh or should I say her? So who's who's this? Oh, I did spot this. This was the highlight of the trailer. From what <laughs> we can, it really, really was. From what we can gather, and I think we're still waiting for sort of official confirmation on yes. this. But from what we can gather, this is the legend that is June Hudson, uh, who is the legendary uh, costume designer. There she is, right front and centre. There, taken uh, uh, during the filming of Destiny of the Daleks. Um, and it, yeah, this is the legendary costume designer who designed uh, Tom Baker's costume for season eighteen, the, uh, the 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 burgundy the burgundy costume, um, and yeah. as well as numerous numerous other other um, serials in Doctor Who. She, you know, she's done so many serials in the seventies and the eighties, um, and she's still going strong. And she's clearly mad as a box of frogs in the very very <laughs> boss, best possible sense. <laughs> She's a, she still is a style icon. When she appears on the Blu-rays, she's wearing more colours than there are in the rainbow. I just love this woman to, to pieces. And it looks very much like it is June Hudson in a blink and you'll miss it cameo in the trailer. No, she's been in the Doctor Who universe before. She was in an episode of Class back in 2016. She was a woman in an off-licence there. With oh, Doc- I didn't realise that. we no. got Cotton's coat on, it seems to me. So, yeah, to go <laughs> yeah. from a costume costume designer all those years, all those shows. She was a Blake Seven as well. That was her. And oh, now course, as yeah. an extra later in life. Absolutely fantastic. Oh, she's just she's just such a wonderful person. When you see her in interviews, she's just adorable. She you, you want her to be everybody's grandmother. She's just a fantastic, yeah. fantastic what person. A legend. And see, a brilliant she's a legend. Really and a great designer. That character looks in I want to know more about that character. Well, hopefully she will be more than just an extra. It'd be wonderful yeah. if, if she's that, more just, than just, just an her, extra. Just spend an hour with her for a yeah. Yeah. yeah, we can write a whole episode around June Hudson. I mean, come on. <laughs> Uh, but Doctor what, Who fans, being it? Doctor Who fans, Ian, they were all so, over this as well. You're going to like this. Did you did you spot this? Oh yeah, we spotted this. Yeah, do we know who this is? Do we care? Sorry. Uh, well, according to Doctor Who fans, you know we've been speculating about the Rani now for 19 years. Uh, Doctor Who fans on X believe that it is. Uh, it has to be because obviously there's only one cassock in the whole universe. <laughs> <laughs> it has to belong to the meddling monk. What do you think the likeliness of that is? I don't know. Uh, you know what? I, I think maybe, maybe because it seems like um, Russell T's bringing out a lot of things from the past and stuff like. Even though he claims right. this, is, this is a new thing, but he seems to be bringing a lot of things from 
the past and his era for some well, reason. Well, that's so a very be. feminine hand. That I'm getting. Oh, okay. <laughs> from that Jodie Whittaker's first thriller. Might be Jodie that Whittaker. Who knows? No. <laughs> and also, that um, looks like the the place where um, that woman drops off Ruby at yeah. the church. It kind of looks like that yeah. area, doesn't it? So it might be the woman that walked away. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know. It looks right, like it's Ruby. <laughs> I don't know who could it is. Be. It could be. Yeah, the dynamic. Not Hugh Grant, Ron though. Ruby. Thing, it's not Hugh Grant. It's not Hugh Grant's <laughs> <Not you. laughs> The dynamic. The dynamic between these two. Uh, well, at uh, those two and between the two. Oh, oh, oh better why, why do they get rid of her? That's a um, that's a rabbi thumbnail just waiting to be. Uh, <laughs> yes. Hello, rabbi from another planet. If you're out there, uh, but the dynamic between these two, though, in all seriousness, you see, I find it strange seeing the Doctor in like tight jeans and t-shirts and things like that. I I don't necessarily think the Doctor should be should look. Uh, typically middle-aged to the naked eye but i think he should sort of he should dress eccentrically whatever he's doing and, and to see him dressed like this it is a bit strange but it, they do look like best friends together uh, that's the vibe that i am enjoying so far uh let's Rest hope that low. goes yeah let's I, hope I, that I, goes definitely not, I definitely that I was, it's uh, debris. I, I've, I've been oh, it's down debris. on this okay. trailer but Mm. I can't deny the vibe is there that it does. The problem, the problem is though, Sarah. Don't you find that it's difficult to sort of invest anything really in these two uh, from that point of view because we know that she's gone from the show at the end, so it yeah. doesn't go. We know it doesn't yeah. go anywhere. Sure whatever difficult. happens, it, 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 you know, it does undermine it somewhat, knowing that she's already gone and potentially, as we understand it, possibly gone under not brilliant circumstances of being removed from the show maybe i, I don't know it's it's difficult I, yeah, it, it just feels like they've really shot themselves in the foot and if this is a success and it gets the kids back in i feel sorry for the kids that are going to get attached to this character when she's going after eight or so episodes it's, mm. it seems such a shame Tardis Travels has just made a comment, sorry, that Dan, that she said the Doctor just looks ordinary rather than eccentric. That's spot on Tardis Travels. That's my feeling with it as well. That's why I don't feel I'm looking at Doctor Who at the moment. I, I'm, not, I'm, not sure, I'm not sure I'm not sure. I'd say ordinary is the right, right word. I think I, th I think because simply because he's a very good looking guy. You don't see people who look like shooting at walking down the street, particularly dressed the way that he does. Mm -hmm. But I do, I do know what you mean, that the eccentricity mm -hmm. isn't there. Mm -hmm. I did appreciate this in the trailer, though, uh, one last little thing reminded me so much of Terry Nation, Simon. I like the idea that we're going to get some sci fi minefields in this somewhere. <laughs> this is to so, <laughs> so Genesis of the Daleks. I'm totally down for that. Mark of the Rani, you know, tried and tested sci fi storytelling. I'm totally down for that at least. Uh, lots more comments in the live chat. Some people are in and some people are definitely out. Looks like Lord Thoth, he's out as well. I've given it a few episodes for the last five years, no more. Even with this new room. Did you yeah, see the Christmas one? I, I do Thoth? understand. I do understand. The problem is I think there's okay. nothing that we're seeing in the trailer that's just basically making us go, oh, wow, okay, right. I've changed my mind now. Clearly, I need to watch this. It just feels very much like business as usual. Um, and it's not going to change it. I don't think the trailer is going to change anybody's opinions. If they've already decided they're out, I don't think, I think it's going to change. So. Well, I was I was pretty black pilled after the Disney Plus announcement. I'm 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 going to say I'm back on board. I was I was always going to be watching this no matter what. But I did. I, I was really lifted by this trailer. I thought it was fantastic. And personally, there's a lot more in that for me that I think is right than isn't. But sadly, it isn't the clincher either that I desperately wanted. It does remind me of the trailer that we got last autumn, which, as we know, you know, those specials, they didn't. They were very 50-50 on who they pleased. And that that's not a result that Doctor Who can afford to come home with at the end of this season in the summer. Did Doctor you, Who returns you, on the 11th of May, 2024, streaming on BBC iPlayer and Disney Plus with uh, the episodes, uh, episode one, the Call of the Universe, and Episode 2, The Devil's Chord, and further episodes are expected to arrive weekly from then. So we shall see. And as always, let us know what you think in the comments section about the trailer. 
our opinions of the trailer and your opinions of our opinions of the trailer. <laughs> All of it is wide open for more speculation here at Type 40 Live. Sarah, what are you going to say? I was going to as your lad seen the trailer, because your, your lads are the perfect age, you know, the mid-20s. This is the generation that... They are trailer. getting... They are getting nostalgic for Doctor Who. They they have oh. been, and and, but I don't know because they've just been too busy, so I haven't really caught up with them. But um, I'll have to ask them or play yeah, them. See what, see what they know, say, yeah. because they did watch the anniversary specials, mm -hmm. and they they largely felt the same way as I did about them. But I don't know if they've seen this yet. I, I certainly don't know how they feel about the new my, Doctor. My so niece, I, I will have to ask. My them. niece, um, Ad, she's she's a geek like me, and she says she's not going to touch Doctor Who with a barge pole, wherever a barge pole is. I don't know what a barge pole is, but <laughs> that's what she says. She's, <laughs> I don't she's think seen, she's not going to touch Doctor yeah. Who. Really? Yeah, she just she just she just says this isn't Doctor Who, and I agree with her. It's not Doctor Who. Yeah, so. that's my feeling at the moment. Yeah. But we'll see. Will yeah. she touch? Will she touch one of these though? She probably will. Uh, <laughs> there you go. Everybody. As long as it's not got it's a tick on it, mine. <laughs> uh, all is not lost after all. Oh, is that uh, Millie's by any uh, chance? That's terrible. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> Springtime. Springtime that, is in the air. That's my in level the of the humour there. <laughs> well, humor. yeah. Let's let's get cheeky. Uh, <laughs> yes, cheeky and cheesy. Just like <laughs> just like Christmas, Simon. Just like Christmas. I like my Easter's to be cheesy, shiny crinkly and crackly as well i always get my easter eggs out of the fridge that's my i like them cold no no there's nothing worse than refrigerated chocolate it's got to be all warm and gooey no i have no, to, no, I have no, to agree I'm, with dan I have I'm to agree with dan. Dan with that. oh no am i alone is it look somebody please in the chat help me out here somebody else do you not hold a cream egg in your hand for a couple of minutes before you eat it so it goes oh, all soft no. and gooey no, oh, no, oh, it's no. the best You're it's the home. best Oh, no, but when but when I do when I when I do have an Easter egg, I only have the one. I only ever have one every year. You know, I don't go and buy six like a lot of people do, Simon. I only buy one every year, and I really enjoy. I sit down. I sit there. I sit with a book, a bit of light reading. But uh, you know, this light reading is very much my level most of the time. But I don't think there's any such thing as light reading when it comes to Doctor Who, and especially not when it comes to to the Doctor Who diary. And if that's not a cue, I've <laughs> I've never heard one. <laughs> 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 yes, indeed. Welcome to, welcome to the, our Easter diary. It's not very Eastery, I'm afraid. We haven't got many Easter eggs in it, I'm afraid. Uh, but yeah, what, what was happening in Doctor Who land uh, in the last week of March through the past 60 odd years? Well, we're spinning, spinning back 54 years to begin with. We've got a couple of, couple of um, units. We talked a lot about unit. Um, yeah. this, this evening, a lot about units. We're going back to some proper classic unit stories uh, tonight. Two two classic unit stories tonight. First of all, fifty four years since the Ambassadors of Death episode two was screened tonight in nineteen seventy. Fifty four wow. years wow. tonight, episode wow. two of the uh, of the Ambassadors of Death by David Whittaker was screening um, on BBC One. Um, and, and the ambassadors of death is one of those stories, to be honest, it drags on and it definitely gets worse <laughs> as time goes on. The first couple of episodes are cracking. Um, it, it was, it, I said it was written by, um, written by David Whittaker. It was the last story to be written by the original story editor, David Whittaker. Um, and he actually said it was his least favorite story that he'd done. And he'd done quite a few and he'd worked on the show for a long time at this point because he'd started back in 1963 as the, uh, as I said, the original story editor, but he didn't like it. He wasn't happy with it. Uh, why, it wasn't he ha why wasn't he happy with it in the finish? Well, to a large extent, I think probably because it was mostly rewritten by Malcolm Hulk. Um, and, and so I think probably <laughs> by the time it, it had got to the screen, it was more Malcolm Hulk than it was David Whittaker. And I don't think he was very happy with it 
the changes. But also, I think he, he realised that it just didn't really quite hold together. It certainly didn't sustain seven episodes. It's one of those things that might have been cracking as a four-parter. Um, it was actually originally set for season six, uh, Patrick Troughton's last season. Um, and no, it was going I, can, to I, can in... imagine, I can imagine that. Yeah, I, I can see it working there. It was going to be set in the future and there was going to be no unit in it. And so it, it, David Whittaker got unit drafted into it and I think he struggled to get unit to work in it. Um, I'm really glad you've got that picture just there at the bottom down with the uh, TARDIS console in because this is yeah. the very first time we ever see the TARDIS console in colour. Yeah. In this in this oh, particular gosh, yeah. story, it's the first time we see it in colour because it's the first time it's appeared in the uh, in the nineteen seventy season in the John Pertwee season, uh, and of course it's the first time we see the TARDIS console outside the TARDIS, which it which it is through the rest of the nineteen seventy season. I still wonder how on earth the Doctor actually manages <laughs> to get it out of the TARDIS. <laughs> But it doesn't matter. It looks brilliant. It's just a fantastic yeah. image of having the TARDIS console. I think it is the kind of thing nowadays that we'd probably get quite grumpy about and say, oh, it was ridiculous. Well, did you see last week they've taken the console out of the TARDIS? <laughs> How would they? We'd be really grumpy about it. But now... Simon, you know. If somebody told me that that was the, the picture there that we're looking at was simply the new TARDIS interior. Now, we probably wouldn't think twice about that. We wouldn't, actually. You're quite right. It'd work well, wouldn't it? Completely. Yeah, you know what? Do you know what, Simon? To, to argue about um, the console being outside of TARDIS, right, today, that would be glorious, wouldn't it? Because, yeah, we'd be <laughs> That's what we were arguing about. about. Yeah, that's yeah, what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah it would be great. It would be glorious. It's right? very, it is very true. Um, th there's, the, there's the titular ambassador of death upon top right as well. I think it's fair to say that this is probably the closest Doctor Who ever gets to Quatermass. For anybody that's seen any of the Quatermass yeah. films or TV yeah. shows, this is, I think, about as close as it ever gets. Um, and, and as I say, units are, are sort of front and centre in, in the Ambassadors of Death. They have a brilliant gunfight uh, in, in the warehouse uh, between the, the, the Havoc stunt team. Um, yes. uh, it, it's, just, it's just a fantastic shootout, a brilliant gunfight, brilliantly staged. Um, interestingly, units have, have got unique... Uh, unique uniforms in that, the Ambassadors of Death. They only ever appear in the Ambassadors of Death, the, uh, the, 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 the particular outfits that the unit boys wear. And also what's um, unique about uh, this story is the, um, is the openings to the Ambassadors of Death. It starts like no other Doctor Who story. Every episode starts firstly with the logo, then you get the reprise of the cliffhanger, and then you get the title. And then he goes back into the episode proper. So, so they're, they're completely unique. I've only ever watched this story about three times. It's one of the stories I've seen at the very, very least. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's just, just a bit of a slog. It's, it's a bit of a long watch. Um, uh, other, other firsts in, in, in The Ambassador's Death, it's the first time we ever hear the cliffhanger sting that comes in um, at the end of the episode. That, this is the first time that appears. Um, I, I, I mean, you're right, Dan. It, it, it's I think it's a hard watch. Uh, the Ambassadors of Death, as I say, it starts promisingly, and it's one of those shows that you want to enjoy. And you look at that that image, top right of the of the the, the space man. It's brilliant. You, I want to love this story and everything about Iconic it. I should love. Iconic and, and not, totally Nigel Neal, just as you said. Very, very, very Nigel Neil. The, the one thing I would say about this particular episode, episode two, that as I was screening today in 1970, it's got, episode one had a brilliant, brilliant cliffhanger um, where the, the, uh, the Doctor and, um, and um, Liz walk into a room and, and there's a guy, Tal Talion, behind the door and he just levels the, uh, the, the gun straight at the Doctor and, and Liz. And it's a brilliant, brilliant cliffhanger. Um, and then episode two has, I think, one of the best cliffhangers of Doctor Who of all time, which is when you've got the um, you've got the recovery seven, um, the the the, 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 the um, what's the word I'm looking for? The, the capsule, the space capsule. Mm. They've recovered this recovery seven space capsule, and you've got Jumper, and it's and it's got there, but, but the but the alien uh, that the the, the 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 space uh, the astronauts haven't come out at this point, and so the doctor's very suspicious. Yeah. So he starts firing these questions at them: uh, What's the capital of Australia? How many beans make five? And they keep on answering the same way, and it ends as the doctor says, "Right, cut it open," and it's just 
a glorious, glorious cliffhanger. If you haven't seen it yet, my description by oh, no means does it justice. I'm, I'm going to have to go back and rewatch this. I think I, I'm going to have to as well. It's done. You know, it's not, worth I'm, watching purely for the, for the cliffhanger, but it just kind of go off that episode said, too. I've admitted on this show many, many times the Pertwee era is my bogey era. I've seen it all, but there's lots of it I just don't and haven't responded to. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of those opinions have been revised in recent years, so I'm hoping that this one could win me. Uh, round. I don't think it will, sadly. I don't <laughs> think it will. <laughs> right. It's not. It's not the best. It's it's but, go, but the, here's here's I'll finish on a lovely little quirky story about uh, the ambassadors of death, which is to say, it's the first couple of episodes focus on this recovery seven um, prop, which is the uh, it's a space capsule that's come back to Earth, yeah. um, uh, which in fact was that they shared the budget on. I think it was out of the unknown or the outer limits. One of those shows they shared the budget, and so the props used in two different shows. Uh, because it's going to cost so much money to uh, to, to make. Um, but filming, filming on Ambassadors of Death was delayed because of a reported UFO sighting that, that mm -hmm. actually turned out to be the Recovery 7 prop that was on a crane. <laughs> <laughs> and people, people started ringing into the police. <laughs> and so they got closed down for a while because everybody thought it was a UFO sighting. <laughs> Wouldn't happen today. It wouldn't happen today. It reminds me of that story, though, that anecdote from the McCoy story, Remembrance of the Daleks, where the Daleks, yeah. where they, they, didn't they set off a an alarm, a smoke they alarm? Set off, they set off just about every alarm in London when they blew up the when they blew up the gates uh, during uh, the filming of Remembrance of the Daleks. They set off this massive yeah. explosion, and 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 sh sh sure as hell, yeah, the whole of the London area that they were filming was closed down by police and fire engines because they just descended on the area yeah. because they thought there was a bomb a bomb going off. Brilliant. <laughs> but, but, but that UFO, I mean, yeah, uh, brilliant. <laughs> Brilliant story. Then, Follow that. What else have you got? Yeah. Following, that, following that is another, what I think actually is a classic unit story. We're only moving one year on the uh, on the coordinates okay. of the uh, of this particular particular edition because we're moving one year forward to 1971 because uh, screening back in 1971, 53 years ago, was the third episode of The Claws of Axos. Oh, and yeah. I do, and I do. I think this is great. I love the, I the... love this story, Simon. So you've watched this, Sarah? I've watched this, yes. You so say you like this? I do like this. I, what it, what did you what did you like? Because I love this story as well. What did you love about it? I, just like the story. Pertweed. Well obviously <laughs> Pertweed, but yeah, Pertweed. the the axons, I love the you know, the, the come bearing yeah. gifts and not, and uh, yeah, the master being embroiled in it, and yeah, and just the, the, you know the organic shape. It was something, you know, something completely different from what we'd seen before. Just so many brilliant ideas, really. And it, big ideas. Funny. Bob Baker and Dave Martin again, sir. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I love yeah, how the BBC has on their thing color at the top. <laughs> <laughs> oh, absolutely. <laughs> That's because so, so much of it is still going out in black and white. But, yeah, you, you're quite right. It was the first one to be written by Bob Baker and Dave Martin. This was their very first uh, story for, for Doctor Who. And, again, interesting, this was also, just like The Ambassadors of Death, this was also originally pitched for Patrick Troughton's final season. Um, oh. And it was going to, yeah, it, 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 and it was going to be all about <laughs> that they, they, Bob Baker and Dave Martin had come up with this brilliant idea about the, the Axon spaceship was going to look like a skull that lands in Hyde Park. Oh. And, Oh, yeah. and Battersea Power Station was going to get blown up and pretty much the whole world was going to be blown up by the end of it. And uh, Barry Letts kind of said, yeah, I think... Uh, See, I can imagine all that. I just yeah, can't I can imagine. imagine. I just can't imagine the second Doctor in the story. Only Pertwee. Yeah, it is one of those. Whereas you can imagine an Ambassadors of Death working, you can't somehow... Yeah. Imagine this working without Pertwee. Well, maybe that's why. It did, yeah, it just didn't. It, it didn't sort of fit in in with the with the mm -hmm. Trout and style, but it did with Pertwee. So, uh, so yeah, Barry Letts got it, um, and and it was originally called Vampire from Space, which uh, which kind of gives it away for anybody that hasn't seen the story. Mm -hmm. Just sort of give it a bit of an idea as to what it's about, but we won't it's, spoil it's it. It's the best uh, terrible that. title ever, isn't it? Vampire in Space. <laughs> <laughs> you can see, but you don't. It's that kind of thing. That's classic. <laughs> it's a classic. <laughs> 
<laughs> and uh, we talked about the uh, we talked about the Doc Two con the, the TARDIS console rather a few minutes ago. The Ambassadors of Death, as I say, the first time we see it in colour. Well, here we go, another nice uh, timey wimey coincidence because the Claws of Access is actually the first time we see the brand new TARDIS console because at the end of the 1970s series it was retired. The the original. The original pale green console mm -hmm. was retired because it was so battered by that point, and they built a brand new one for the Claws of Axos. So it's the first time we ever see the new console is in uh, is in the Claws of Axos. Um, as you can see from the bottom there, the, the, it was it was a cold, cold shoot. The, 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 the <laughs> Katie Manning in particular has has uh, talked relentlessly about how her legs had literally turned blue. Um, on, on this shoot, bless her. Really? And it, this is the, this, of course, is the story where you get the wonderful line about freak weather conditions um, because they had snow, they had fog, yes. they had yeah. sun, they had just about every weather condition mm -hmm. going. And uh, and we get this wonderful line about. It, apparently, Nicholas Courtney complains that it was so cold that half of his moustache fell off because um, <laughs> <laughs> the glue just the glue froze <laughs> and his moustache fell off. Um, and this is the last time, this is the second and only, uh, second and last time that we see uh, Corporal Bell, um, who is, who is you, you talked earlier on, Sarah, about female unit uh, troopers. And it's yeah. first and last time, sorry, it's second and last time we see Corporal Bell, the, uh, the, the famous um, female uh, unit corporal. But I, 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 for anybody that remembers Dick Emery, to me, Corporal Bell just looks like Dick Emery. Uh, yes. when you think, oh, you are awful. Uh, character. Um, if you don't know oh, what I'm talking about, don't look at the camera. Yeah. You, you and, and unfortunately, so Corporal Bell, and, and she's played by one, but she does look like Dick Emery. I'm, I'm sorry, but she just Stephen, does. Stephen Noonan, if you're watching, he's a big Dick Emery fan. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, bloody, I won't be able to unsee that now. I'm sorry. I wish I hadn't said it. I regret it now. Can we cut it out, Dan? Cut it out when you scream. Just cut that, cut that bit out. For everything I've said about the Pertwee era before, and my confession a moment ago, for me, the clause of access, access is pretty much perf perfection. I adore this story. It's very quintessentially Pertwee. It just is. Yeah. It, it, and it's very quintessentially yeah. 70s. You know, once you, for anybody that hasn't seen it, the inside of the spaceship, it's just like uh, a, a, a headache in a, in a damaged brain. No, uh, no. Uh, as as visualized by top of the pops circa 1972 it's just the most groovy psychedelic thing you've ever seen um it's just brilliant i love, I guess I love. that's the beauty of the episode though isn't it i mean yeah. it, it speaks for that time oh, totally but also, but also pertweed was masterful in it again i love pertweed i think Pertweed was Me one too. Of the best yeah. best they all, they all, i mean everything you know it, it just is it, partnership with delgado and then you yeah. know you, yeah. you get that like for one split second, you're like, is he really going to do that? No, no, he's yeah. not. No, he wouldn't. He wouldn't. But um, and yeah. and Delgado's brilliant. And Bob and Bob yeah. Baker and Dave Martin were very happy about sort of having to incorporate the master into because they were forced to incorporate the master, and they didn't think that he fitted in very well to the story. I disagree. I think he fits in brilliantly. Is it, oh, is it, is it true really that they him. they were going to actually make him the Doctor's brother? Yeah, yeah, it is true. They oh, well, they considered it. Yes, it was all. It was always thought about. Yeah, right, yeah, okay. right the way through the, the classic run. They they always sort of toyed with the idea. Yeah, maybe that's why I struggle to imagine the Trout and Doctor as well in this because the balance between the two, yes. the Doctor and the Master, seems so essential to it as well. To to me, yeah. I mean, it, I mean, it is difficult because they're this is the season where the master is in every single story and so every time he miraculously and, uh, and surprisingly pops up it's no miracle and it's no surprise yeah. uh, you know you're used to the fact that oh it's going to be the master again um so right. I, I get that it's difficult to sort of write the master in realistically and believably but you know what but Simon, it's still great I, to see him i i love the idea that um they're both two intelligent people and when they get together and they're aspiring together there's intelligent writing right there yes and that's, and that's missing from every iteration of the master um beyond uh obviously the the 80s doctor and beyond and that's what's missing from it in my opinion i love it when those two are in the room oh 
and it's they're priceless. trying to be clever over it's trying to get one over the, the other yeah. person and that's what makes that error beautiful in, in my opinion well and it's also done it's done with it's done with sort of gravitas but it's also done yeah. with enormous humor as well exactly yeah, exactly yeah it's very funny they, they do get the balance just perfect i think, I think it was starting starting to you know right again with, with missy especially in that final series no it, it. Wasn't. No, oh, it wasn't. wasn't no it wasn't no it wasn't yeah i think i can't imagine the master not being in this story no he's i can't he's, he's, and I. yeah he is to the front and center and he's and he's brilliant in this i i think if anything this is this is one of roger delgado's finest performances and and fine so he's kind of in his stride by this point when you when you just find him in the middle of the ship and it you know yes. he's, he's, been, he's essentially a prisoner but you know yeah he's tried and to he was really swindle. miffed yeah he's tried to swindle the axe yeah. <laughs> that is such a master thing to do it is it's, it's i just love this story it, it just as i say it's quintessentially Pertwee, yeah. and, and it, in many ways, this is kind of the absolute quintessential Pertwee story. If you know what I mean, if you it if is. you only had one Pertwee story left in the archive to represent the whole era, this is as good as any. In all yeah. honesty, yeah, it, it just is so Pertwee. <laughs> also, the one with the dinosaurs is great. <laughs> They're all great. I love that Pertwee. There's I lots of good ones. Uh, don't eat one. spaghetti. Watching this advises Matthew Panderson. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lots of spaghetti. And of course, they went on to use what the, one of the claws of Axos, one of the Axon uniform outfits, the 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 the, the Wrigley man, um, as the uh, crinoid in the Seeds of Doom. They sprayed it green and reused it as crinoid. Yeah, yeah just sprayed it green. That's what they did in those days. I, I always suspected that, and I thought, yeah, that is it is true. That's well, exactly that was the error, error of monsters, wasn't it? Error yeah. of monsters. Every oh, time you saw a monster, it would terrify you as a kid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and then you know, I miss those days personally. Yeah, yeah, when they're in like the 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 golden form, they still don't, you you're still on edge. Like, no, yeah. don't trust them. What are you doing? Yes, There's something wrong here. There's, it's just got that that. That eeriness to it, you just know there's something not quite right. Do yeah, it's good. Try. It's it's a crack. So I say anybody that hasn't seen the Clause of Axos, I, I do recommend this one. If yeah, it's a good entry point for for, for the Kirk <laughs> era. Um so yeah, happy birthday, happy 53rd birthday to the Clause of Axos. Right. And um, and very finally tonight, very finally, just briefly, we're gonna look at something that actually we, we teased earlier on. Dan teased it very cleverly earlier on. You really? teased it on, yeah, you did a clever thing. You teased it in the uh, in the advert break. Oh. Oh, yes, Weetabix, oh, because God. it's exactly, exactly 47 oh. years this week since this uh, second Weetabix promotion was launched um, back in, uh, what would it be, 77, 1977. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the, 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 it was, the, as I say, it was the second of two Weetabix promotions. The first one they'd done a couple of years back in 75 with the early uh, Tom Baker stuff. Um, but by mm. this point... You know, Doctor Who was absolutely on a roll, and Pertwee was was absolutely fly. Uh, sorry, uh, Tom Baker was absolutely flying by this point. Um, it, Doctor Who could do no wrong, mm -hmm. and so this promotion was put together by the gentleman that you can see on the left, who is a, a, an artist called Gordon Archer, and so he did all the artwork for both of the promotions. Uh, for Doctor Who uh, and Weetabix. Actually, he also did um, a load of other promotions uh, for, for Weetabix. He did things like Star Trek, Space 1999, Asterix, Jerry Anderson, so on and so forth, because at that point, uh, Weetabix would often run these promotions. Um, and so Gordon Archer there, as I say, photographed on the left, that is a photograph that was posted by Gordon's son, John. Um, I think Gordon is actually still with us. Um, and the, in front of him there are a couple of posters a few years back. Uh, the, jo John, Gordon's son, um, put out a, a, a website called Yellow Planet. And they uh, he, he made available posters of the uh, of the cards that were that were given out. And so those are the posters that you can see there in front of Gordon. I've, I've got here. I've got here uh, uh, four. Oh, there we go. You see, those that's what you used to get. So what would happen is you'd get, for anybody that really wasn't there at the time, doesn't know what on earth we're talking about, Weetabix was a breakfast cereal, and you'd get these little, uh, little stand-up cards inside, and so they would fold out 
into that you would get these uh, these little dioramas with with um, three monsters on, or, or the TARDIS in the case of the one on the top left. Um, and you got some kind of strange strange ones there. You got Vegan Exus and Blor along with Agador in the uh, in the fifth set there on the middle right, which was all rather strange. Um, but but yeah, you get these little dioramas, and then on the other side, you got uh, you got a little bit of a description about the monster, um, and a, 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 and you got a secret uh, message from the Time Lords as well that you can see there that you used wow. that to translate. To put you and off you, your breakfast. <laughs> you translated it. You translated it by uh, by there was the there was the um, the special translator printed on the inside of the uh, of, of the, the cardboard box. That the, is so uh, cool. Why don't they do things like that? Isn't now? it brilliant? Isn't it brilliant? Right. And I've got here. I've got. I've got four of the um, four of the absolute Close. original ones. Close to one, Simon. Yes. Here we go. Here are four oh, of the. Wow. So oh, this is what Simon. this is what these are unopened. I still haven't opened these. So this is what it looked like on that side, and then you turned it over, and this is where you got so you got your little description there of the um of of uh, there you go there's there's the crinoid that we talked about oh. a few minutes ago and how so you open so, these up and you get, they still you get so white and colorful and colorful and crisp I, I i have to be honest these aren't my originals i was very very lucky i bought these off uh, off ebay a few years ago i'm still missing the other two so if anybody's got the other two out there that uh, that, would, that feels generous and wants to send them to me. I'm still after the other two, <laughs> and I'm still toying with the idea: do I actually open them up or not? They they literally see what you know. It's in there. They're in there. The other oh, ones are yeah. in there. But I just can't bring myself to open them up. <laughs> I but, had all of them. And then what would happen? Here we go. So you'd open them up, and then, then you'd get these the race through spaces one game that, and you can see there the Time Lords top right and the metabolic mm. spiders in the middle there and the daleks on scaro and so what would happen on the back of the box of weedabix would be printed one game zone uh and when you got all four of them you put yes. them together and it created yeah. a whole uh, a, an entire game board and you can see just down in the bottom right there there's a tardis console a quarter of a tardis console yeah, yeah. So once you put it together, you got a complete TARDIS console in the middle as well. And then the idea was these little the little cards. You you obviously had to sort of cut them up, um, and they were the they were the playing pieces. You know, I remember lots of lots of serial promotions. A little later on, I remember Gordon's Star Trek: The Motion Picture tie-in from the yes, but the ones that I remember were done with nowhere near the amount of flair and imagination as there had to have been a Doctor Who fan working at, <laughs> yeah. working at with the pics on yeah. this. This is insane. Yeah. I had all I had all of these, you know, I had oh. all of them and I had it in a box, right? So and then um it got thrown away by oh. the <laughs> No and <sighs> even had um the whole of that you, you know, had the whole game, game board. The whole game board. That's and I cool. put it so I put it in a box and everything and you know and and then they were clearing out. And oh, out. no. Yeah, I know. Oh, so awful. annoying. So annoying. But I remember awful. those days because it was great because you used to get things. Remember PG Chips had uh, Doctor Who? PG Chips had them well. in yeah. as well. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah, absolutely amazing. I, I, I yeah, grew yeah. up in the wrong time, obviously. Well, well, the thing is, truth be told, Sarah, this is all we got. You know, there wasn't much Doctor Who merchandise <laughs> around. Were, the, the, this was before even any Doctor Who figures had been released. This was a year before wow. the... Uh, that the, the Dennis Fisher figures came out, so we've got nothing. This was as exciting as it got. Yeah. Some little cardboard cutout figures right. and a That's game right. board on the back of a box of cereal. That's right. And also, we didn't have obviously we didn't have any internet or you no. know, what we got is what we got. You know, yeah, we yeah. I'm afraid, I'm afraid it is. I, 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 so unfortunately, Ian, the bad news is for you if you wanted to go and try and sort of re uh, replace your missing set, a full set of these these little cards will set you back around about 100 150 pounds in in mint condition wow. holy cow yeah <laughs> great. So be they, honest, i i was expecting you to say a lot more than that yeah <laughs> unfortunately because because they're so they're so rare because simply because you know i was lucky to get these unopened obviously most most cases people just open them and played with them and they got damaged yeah, so they'll often come up on ebay in poor condition but it's very rare to get them which is why i'm still looking for the four uh, the fifth and sixth ones of this set um because yeah they, they I, I yeah to, as a obviously as an illustrator and as, as a designer i mean i love the cards themselves of course i do but that game board i just think is so charming so yeah, beautifully lovely, put together i mean uh, people may or may not know but for several years i worked for cadbury and so I used to create games like this to go on the back of selection boxes at Christmas and uh, selection pack packs. 
at Easter. And so I know how yeah. difficult it is <laughs> yeah. to put some of these games together, let alone illustrate them. And, and this one is so beautifully done. And, and, and there was so a, there was cool. another one. There was another one that I think was set in a cave, and that had got Silurians in it. Um, mm. the, 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 so there were four in total. They were they were beautiful game boards. Beautiful. I think my designed. favorite touch. My favorite touch is scarrow and you've got the mists the sort of gas around yeah. the planet yeah the daleks coming up over the surface i just think it's but in those days um the board games were the thing wasn't it i mean yes kids have got their phones now and they could they can play games on their phones but to throw a dice and to move yeah. a card do you know That's what i mean it is. in those days it was it was the height mm. of our day especially if it was christmas time and you were playing yeah, a board yeah. game and do you know i mean it's yeah. all of that's lost but I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't get. Not I don't in my house, we always. No, your we house. Have board, <laughs> yeah. We always have board yeah. games. <laughs> I don't, I don't. What you call it? I get it that if you don't understand what I'm saying, but people from my era understands the beauty of uh, of board games. Uh, they're really, really fun. But anyway, yeah. Yeah, Tardis Travels just saying there that the box goes for three hundred pounds. Yeah, the box. I, uh, you, wow. it's very, very rare to it's, manage yeah. to get a box. I see them come up occasionally on uh, on eBay. It's again. It's obviously very rare because because they just got thrown away or damaged. You know what's strange, Simon, is that Weebix has not changed their logo. Has not changed no, they set the colour of so their box. Changed it a lot. Years. Yeah, it's not a lot. Yeah. yeah, still, it still works. I, remember, I mean, I remember in like the eight the eighties and nineties, particularly the nineties. You know when Jerry Anderson came back round, yeah, and you mm. could collect the coupons and you got. Yeah. Stingray and all the Thunderbirds. I remember collecting all them. I think they did Jurassic Park when that when that film first came yeah. out. But never never anything as lovely as that. And the, and that that you can see on the right hand side, that was obviously the um that was the uh, the, the little display board that went uh, that yeah, they yeah, used yeah. To, that they used to put up, which is again it's just a beautiful piece of artwork. I mean on the one hand it's it's yeah, very creative. We call them header cards in the, in the trade. There you <laughs> are. Remember, right? I've designed remember, many of those. <laughs> in those days, right, there were no computers. This guy nope. had to draw it by hand. Yeah. He had to paint it by hand. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know how difficult that is? It's difficult. Yeah. So, yeah. And as I say, on the one, him, you know? because of, yeah, absolutely, you know, because of that, it looks kind of dated, but not in a bad way. Obviously, yeah. I just love I these. I love it. Love, yeah. I appreciate it all the more that it is hand on. Yeah. Real artists, real artists. No, no AI. Real Correct. artists. And I love this comment from Philip Roy. Yeah, yeah. Philip says I hated Weetabix as a kid. Just swallowed my pride <laughs> and the Weetabix in vast quantities to get all the cards. Yeah, yeah. I was with you on that. Philip. I hated and I still hate Weetabix, but I, I did. Still eat it. I eat it. <laughs> oh, I hate it. it. I eat it every day. But I, I ate buckets of it to get these little oh. blighters. I really yeah. did. You eat it um, hot, hot or cold? No, I eat, I eat it cold because it, 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 you know, obviously it does something I, to my I digestive system. <laughs> <laughs> so and, there you go. <laughs> and Tardis Travels is quite right that there were also different size boxes. They did a twelve box as well. So the yeah. game you got on the twelve box was was slightly different. Like, that was yes. yeah, that was that was yeah. a slimmer. That was a slimmer yeah. little game. But you, you still got, got a game even one, on that one. And then he got yeah. the the flat one. And then yeah, now yeah, got yeah. The Eight one, whatever it is, they got it. Was just so, it was happy, happy days, and oh, and I got to say, by the way, the advert that you screened earlier on, uh, Dan, in the yeah. advert break, the Weetabix yeah. advert that went out, that famously has uh, the, the Dalek that is in that is Terry Nation's Dalek. Um, it's from his private oh. collection, it was the one that had been seen a couple of years before in Planet of the Daleks, painted gold and purple, um, and and it was resprayed gr uh, red and black. Uh, for this one, but yeah, if that's a Terry, that's a Terry oh. Nation original Dalek. That's from his uh, oh, original collection. It's his Dalek right. Supreme. So, there Simon, you go. Have you got this board game? Have you actually got the board? No, I haven't, Sarah. I haven't got the board game. Oh. All I've got, all I've got, are these four little cards. No, I'm going to do. I desperately need the other two. I, need the two. I want to play this game. Well, hold on. Where did you get them from? Did you get them from eBay or something? I got these off eBay. Yeah. Uh, and the other two's out there, right? Oh yeah, that you can get them. I just haven't managed to get them yet in wow. in mint condition. They I said they come up a lot, but not in mint condition. Mint condition. It took me a few years to get these, and I'm still looking. So if anybody's got mint condition, <laughs> of the two that I'm missing, I know, I know who has. Stephen Noonan will got a full set. <laughs> right, come on, Stephen. You don't want them anymore. You've had them long <laughs> enough. Let them go to a new home. 
<laughs> the difficulty then is to say, do I then open them? I really want to open them and put them in a frame. I want to frame them up. That's what I want to do. <laughs> oh, anyway, oh. happy days. 47 years. Happy birthday, Weetabix, 47 yeah, years ago for their action game. Yeah. Yeah, don't don't be don't be too sad about it, Simon. If you if you are, you can always have another one of these. I'll have another hot cross bun. <laughs> cross buns all round. Yeah, get back, Iceland. This will show them uh, <laughs> for another fabulous fabulous entry. <laughs> You're welcome. Thank you, what a what a belter! A lot of people in the live chat there on YouTube, Rumble, and Facebook are feeling quite hungry. Even though it's quite late, it's getting a little late in the UK, but maybe they're going to get peckish. Have a bit of Weetabix before bed <laughs> Yeah, yeah, they are. They're ch they're chowing down in the live chat. I'm having. Yeah, that's. I've, I've just got to say, to, yeah, because Tardis, uh, um, who is it? sorry, Tardis Travels has just reminded me that John Scott Martin played the Dalek in uh, the advert the and Canada. also did the voice in the advert. I'd forgotten about that. We talked about Saitan at the top of the show. Who was oh, the other Dalek? One of the other Dalek operators. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this one was John Scott Martin, and he did the voice as well. Thanks, to Tardis Travels. Travels. Apparently, there are two different boxes as well. One that has yeah. twelve meter bits and one twenty. Yeah, that's what I said. There's a big one. And then, and then the yeah. little slim one. Yeah, this is yeah. this is hardcore, but, even for us. <laughs> when, you to, when, you used to, when you used to eat Weetabix in the seventies, you used to plow a, a lay of sugar over each each yeah, one. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. I remember. <laughs> Never today, though. Like that. a layer. <laughs> My brother used to have Weetabix all the time, and that, that was what he used to do, yeah. So Sugar let's know what it. you think of it all. Your memories, too, there in the comments section. The Ambassadors of Death, the Claws of Axis, and the, the Terror of, of the Weetabix. You find out <laughs> the Terror of the Weetabix. I like it. There's a show in that. Uh... <laughs> Particularly when you find out how much you're going to pay to get any of the sods back on eBay there. All right. Uh, by all means, hit us up in the comments section and rub it in if you've got some a full set in beautiful condition. Maybe you were paid a few hundred quid for one of those boxes. Somebody must be buying them, otherwise they wouldn't go up on e it's not eBay for that money, would they, sure. Sarah? <laughs> it's not me. It's not me. Oh, great stuff. Great stuff, says Matthew Pounder. I don't know if he's talking about Weetabix or the Doctor Who Diary. It must be the Doctor Who Diary sign. Oh, oh, bless you all. Thank you no, so much for the lovely comments. comments. I yeah. love doing it. Mm. <laughs> great stuff uh, great Doctor Who Diary says Fly Highland thank you Fly and, Highland uh, very kind yeah. of you all that sort of stuff. Brilliant. Yes, so we're into the final straight, everybody, of our big Easter parade for 2024. A little bit more to come. A little bit more to come. I wonder if he's done done, done the thing. Yeah, it's your podcast. <laughs> Just want video evidence. Play this podcast. What app have you got? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, we'll oh this is the best conversation I've been involved in. I'll tell you what, I'm going to send that to myself. Yeah. Right? So I know it's you. I'll we'll see us all on there. Okay. You might change your mind if you see it. <laughs> don't say that, Sarah. <laughs> it's funny every time. Isn't you it? can't tell I'm a nervous talking to Paul. Can you? <laughs> One day he'll turn up on this on this uh, podcast. How can he, 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 he not with these ears? Ian? <laughs> he, has, he has told us that he will, but he will materialise at some point. Oh. Uh, before we hop off into the sunset, everybody, we've got one last look at the view screen. It's our regular eye up your temporal schism in search of the prettiest pictures from <laughs> <out there. laughs> In the universe. I've been cracking that joke for weeks. Sarah's only just got it. Okay, so is there, this is for fan art, traditional art, or digital art. It's for craft and arts and cosplay and anything creative. If you can create it, we want to see it. Get it up on the on the view screen here at type 40 life for us all to have a good old, a good old look. Uh firstly, though, I want to remind people of this because Jeff Cummins reminded me that this exhibition is about to close. Uh, mm. Western Supermare, this is the big Doctor Who artwork exhibition, Simon. Did you make it over to this one? In the oh, end? I still haven't made it, no, and I'm clearly not going to manage to make it now. They extended it as well. I, think they extended I know it. they extended it. Where is it? 
Western. It's Western. And annoyingly, I'm going to be down in Western Supermare at, at the end of May. Um, and so I'm going to miss it by about a month. Oh, I'm gutted. I'm uh, really I think Jeff's been over a couple of times. I know our friend Tasha Akaleos, she's been over. So it's yeah. been blessed by the great and the good. <laughs> yeah. And, but there he's having a whale of a time uh, pointing out his uh, three doctors artwork yeah. there. And is that the also people? His No, not the also people. What's his... Um, is it called the also people his new adventures artwork anyway it's all it's all there and all that fabulous stuff from doctor who discovers and the oh yeah oh, fabulous yes so it's still got a little while to run i think next week sometime yeah i think it's about the 15th is it about 15th of april 13th of april something like yeah. that closes. Yeah, i think yes, it's about yeah, the end of easter holidays oh what a shame mm. they're sorted out i mean jeff may, he may still be there he may be camped out who knows <laughs> who knows who knows uh yes so uh earlier on we we talked about this, didn't we? The symmetry between the start of New Doctor Who in 2005 and all New Doctor Who right now in 2024 and what how things looked then and how things look now, all the rest of it. So it does bring to mind the fact that just the other day, it was the 19th anniversary of New Doctor Who and Christopher Eccleston and Billy Piper and the Ninth Doctor's era. That has been celebrated, of course it has, by the fan artists out there and there's been lots of digital art lots of fancy stuff but i think the one that really caught my eye the one i think that communicated me to the most the excitement of that time sarah of doctor who coming back for everyone was this one by little who girl oh, oh that is gorgeous <laughs> that's brilliant i love it i, I, I love little who girl she, she she brightens my week we haven't featured any of her work for a little while, but everything, if you go and follow the account over on X, it's run by her dad and a steady flow of just the most beautiful pictures, which I know that she does gift to various uh, Doctor Who personalities when she goes to conventions and things. They go, they have family days there and things like that. It's it's a real white pill following that account it is. over just, on Twitter. Uh, you, you have a bad day, you look at that and everything's right with the world again I love the little, the little... She's, she's got i was gonna say she's got the hair right she's this just yeah, that little bit of hair on the top yeah. Ian? the little girl drew this yeah yeah okay and it's just <laughs> i just yeah i can just picture the exact moment that she's she's referring how to old is she i can't oh. remember maybe about seven now seven or eight seven. Yeah. Okay. I love that she's even got the right colour on the ju on the jumper. That's yeah, that's yeah. a dark purple on the jumper. Yeah. The hair is perfect, says YW. That's lovely, said Richard Brooks. Uh, fantastic. We've got several fantastics. One from Fly Highland, one from Crimpoline de Bloon. And uh, yeah, very nice, says Ezra Colson. Yeah, I just thought this was, of all the artwork that I've seen, there's some really flashy digital artwork out there celebrating 19 years of the Ninth Doctor. But in all seriousness, I don't think any of them really capture the magic of that time and the appeal of new doctor who well it was appealing to it was appealing to people of that age at that time wasn't it so this is why this is just so perfect because you know no it's not the finest art in the world but it doesn't matter it's just a, a real piece of exuberant art from from a kind of kid that should be enjoying doctor who today you know you need these age kids to be watching doctor who today uh because that's what we were all doing but we had when we were that age we were drawing daleks and things different time though wasn't it simon yeah yeah it was a different time but we need to get it back and there's no reason why it couldn't come back it could well, yeah, true. Again, capture it. again yeah simon i agree it just it just, just reminds true. you of those most innocent times and yeah because i do pictures up. just like this when i was that age <laughs> of tom baker uh, talking about capturing innocent times, I don't think you necessarily have to be young to capture them or recapture them. Uh, and uh, the artist New Peeny has perfectly achieved that with this new picture of the 14th Doctor and Wilf there. Oh, wow. Wow. Yeah, oh I love that. Cool, that's cracking. Yeah. It's wonderful, really, isn't it? Really good. Really that's good. very good. I that, that's the kind of thing... That's the kind of thing that would end up on someone's pajamas or something, you know. Or, yeah, you yeah know. I'd, I'd yeah. wear that. Yeah. <laughs> I just think that's absolutely beautiful. Yeah. That, it always just, 
yeah, it, it's perfect. The everything Just the about the style it. of it, the yeah. style of it, the rendition, the, the even the, the, the stars are perfectly yeah. placed. Yeah, the the color palette and everything. I I just adore this. Uh, Nupinu Nupini. Their art is up on X at the moment. A, a relatively new account, but lots of beautiful artwork, just like this. Fabulous illustrations nice. from throughout nice. to history. And yeah, I think, but it looked great, uh, great on a greetings card too, or something like that. Mm. It's yeah, fabulous. I nice just love something. the style of that. It's really, really. Clever. Always nice yeah. to see anything that features that features Wilf as yeah. well. Also, what's interesting is that he's got his. Is that's his signature in the square there, isn't it? Yeah. So everything in this picture um, is, I don't know how to describe it. Um, By hand? Balances very well. Oh, Even yeah. the signature yeah. compared to the, the characters and the stars, it's all balanced very well. I'm using the wrong word here, but you know what I mean. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah. well, it's framing, isn't it, Ian? Yes, yeah, it, yeah. It's, it's yeah. framed correctly. And the other thing that I love about it, that again, we've said about on the show before now, is it's not copied from pictures or anything. That's purely no. from the Poonies' imagination. Yeah. Yeah, it's and great. I, I always love to see artwork that is that is not copied from pictures. Yeah. Gary Akers has uh, spotted. I think this is a this is a great pick. How um, much it looks like something Norman Norman Rockwell would have painted mm. years ago. Mm. It's got that yeah. classic look, hasn't it? Ameri yeah, yeah. Obviously Americana, but I, I know exactly. It's again, it's the the choice. It's the choice of colours. I think yeah. expressions yeah. on their faces. Just fabulous, fabulous work. Yeah, lovely. And enough. this one's been sent in by Warren Green. And this is, I, I love the energy of this. And this as well, it's called Hugopolis. And it's full of everything. Oh, we have wow. uh, we have Unit HQ there, the current yeah. Unit HQ. We've got Wotan. We've got the Hoomobile. We've got Daleks on uh, almost flyabout things from the comics. Hoverabouts. Uh, Hoverbouts, is that what they're called? That's we've what they're called, hoverbouts, yeah. But we've got the uh, the crack there from the uh, from the Matt Smith here. There's lots of things yeah. the more you look at. I love uh, canine more... on the back of the Hoomobile. Look at canine riding the oh, Hoomobile. Yeah. <laughs> they're trying it's... to shoot down uh, one of the war machines. And, very... and there's there's a Sontaran spaceship and a root and top right as well. Oh, very yeah. charming, oh, isn't well it? Spotted. Oh, yeah. that's yeah, again, it just shook Very his, charming. His, just... Very charming. Uh, and yeah. is that is that that looks like Axos on the far right as well? I'm, oh, and I've just spotted yeah. as well. I think just coming in on the middle right is could even that could be the uh, K1 robots claw. Yeah, mm. oh, I, was, yeah. I only just spotted just that coming in on the right. Yeah. St. Paul's Cathedral, obviously there from the invasion. Yeah. Uh, Canary Wharf from yeah. uh, Doom uh, from Army of Ghosts and Doomsday. Mm -hmm. Nesting consciousness coming up as well from the bottom. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, in the eye again. <laughs> of course. Yeah. Just brilliant, Warren. Re really enjoy this. Really, really fantastic. That I'm just trying to recognise that spaceship middle top. What's that arrow spaceship middle top? Oh, no. Uh, could be, could, bow, could. A bow ship from State of Decay? No, I don't think so. I'm wondering whether it's the I'm wondering whether it's the Master's Adjudicator ship from Colony in Space. Warren, we need you to tell us what is that spaceship top middle. There you go. Get in touch, Warren. Let us know. Fill in some of the blanks there, but it's a, a, a fabulous, fun, it's fantastic. That's so much to look at in that. So yeah, much. Yeah, yeah. Really, really nice. Really, really yeah. nice stuff. Uh, Lucinda Bundy's in and says, uh, "Shooter Gatwa is such an awesome doctor. I can't wait to see him in action with Millie Gibson." Hello, we go. If you scroll back, if you do a little bit of time traveling, we've discussed the trailer. We've discussed the uh, the upcoming episodes themselves too. Here with some sensitive information before the BBC gets it out, so you can go and find that earlier in the show. Wow, that's amazing! Says YW. We've got double wows again mm. there. Yeah, uh, we, yeah. Pe people do seem to like this. I like that combination of classic and new yeah. nestings. Oh yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. Well spotted. I've got Autron balls. Oh, as well. uh, it's all it's yeah, it's Autron energy spheres on the far right. Well, sort of top right. I thought it was Axos, but uh, no, Gaz is quite right. I can now see they're Autron energy spheres. Yeah, chameleons suggests Peter Harrington. Chameleons where? Could be. Uh, yeah, where are the chameleons? Can't see them. Could be. Could be. Oh, I've just spotted the TARDIS. I hadn't spotted the TARDIS before. Yes, yeah, on unit. On unit, yeah, on the unit. Yeah. I spotted that. 
<laughs> Very nice job, Warren. More power to you, sir. Keep them coming, Warren. He sent me a few, but we'll we'll just spread them around. We won't we won't uh, hit them. Oh all yeah, I can't wait to see more. Yeah, yeah I got some more. Really <laughs> and uh yes last but by no means least simon this one's for you this is well this is um close to home you could say in fact when it comes to you it actually is your home <laughs> this shot oh. <laughs> the secondary control room from doctor who so yeah. um why why do i liken this to your <laughs> <laughs> you like and you I, you like at this to my home dan because i i i have uh the stained glass windows that you can see there uh in what in one of my rooms in the downstairs toilet of my house i had made um i i really should i, I should put a photo of this up at some point shouldn't i yeah i had made a stained glass uh window to go in uh one of the rooms of my house and it is the windows uh, it's the stained glass roundels uh from this secondary console room yeah and it took me ages i i it took me ages to sort of find the design and to draw them all out i had to draw them you know sort of full size and send them off to the glaziers and i had to pick all the colors out um and it's one of my favorite things in my house is the uh yeah is the is the stained glass window that is these windows well, uh -huh. and it amazes me how people can do to do this yeah. i mean not just not just have them in their home i mean <laughs> <laughs> you know, you're crackers, like, really isn't it <laughs> uh, your other half is a very patient man but, he's a very uh, very patient but, man yeah. but, but more <laughs> to the point more patience i feel and and skill it is um, in the hands of the people who can actually make these things who can recreate these things from the show that we love so much uh, anthony berriman uh, Cooper's dad, he sent in this of oh, his. Yeah. Of oh, his. Wow. Now, wow. If you remember, he spoke to you about this at Hooverville last year, didn't he, Tony? Do you remember? Yeah, absolutely. I can't believe that. I didn't realise he'd actually made a stained glass little rounder like that. That's oh, exactly. Didn't he see something where he presented Louise Jamison with one? He uh, did. <gasps> oh, that's fabulous! Gorgeous! Oh, but that no, absolutely. Was so that, that that's that's even better than the one that's in the my downstairs toilet. I have to say, I'm very very impressed by that. That's just beautiful. So he's made these, has he? Yeah. Apparently so. What a, what a talent! Tony. Wow, that's, that is just fantastic. I'm very very impressed by that. Tony sent sent these along a couple of weeks ago. I mean, are you very practical, Ian? Can you can you do stuff like this? I I have to admit, I really no. Really when I was younger, I could have, I could have, um, but not 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 today. No, I I when I was a lot younger, I could draw caricatures, but I can't do it today either. So, yeah, I probably could have made that in my twenties, but not now, <laughs> not now. You, you know, it's, much, it's one thing, like I obviously. I, I draw, I can create like that, like two-dimensional stuff. But making stuff, pottery, anything to do with glass and metal work and wood, you know, I, I, I was just... Good. I was quite good at that. I was quite good at um, woodwork and, and metal work when I was in uh, secondary school. Yeah, yeah. Good at it, but, yeah. Oh, I, I, I need to send Anthony a photo of my uh, of my stained glass windows, don't I? In the, in oh, yeah, the, definitely. The downstairs, Lou. I need to swap swap photos with him. That's just fantastic, that is. And obviously there's Louise Jameson as well. She's still working, isn't she? She's in Emmerdale. Yeah. Is she Emmerdale now? Was it Emmerdale? Yeah. She's in, yeah. Right. Yeah, 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 Emmerdale. Yeah, Emmerdale. yeah, she's still working. That's cool. That's so, really Tony, thank I, you. I'm agreeing with everybody as well in the chat. I love that secondary console oh, room, absolutely, which is why I did the stained glass windows. So do I. So do I. I. Love it as well. no. it's, it's got so much character. And yeah. It's, it, it's yeah. never brought up anywhere else, though. It's no. such, a, such a shame it's not. It it's is. It's beautiful. Mired. It's yeah. beautiful. Yeah. I have, I'm amused by Crimpoline Doubloon's comment that uh, about my downstairs toilet. The smallest room in the house is it bigger on the inside? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, the console room. Yeah, I'm liking it, Peter. Okay. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, fabulous, <laughs> fabulous work, Tony. Thank you for sharing these pictures. I mean, look at Louise's face. She's I genuinely know. thrilled. I, I really hope she's got that hanging up somewhere in, in a conservatory window. She probably has. She probably yeah. has. I hope so. It's beautiful. <laughs> I've just realised I said that was the last one. It's not. Oh. oh okay. Go on. And Simon, again, 
It's just for you. I didn't know you were going to bring out. It's all about me, folks. It's all about me. It's because I came dressed as an Easter egg. That's what it is, yeah. isn't it? <laughs> I didn't know you were going to bring out the object that you brought out at the top of the show. When I when I grabbed this, this is the latest piece from Andrew Mark Thompson, and I think it probably speaks for itself. Hey! <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> fantastic. I love that. <laughs> so obviously this is Andrew yeah. has been on the classic 1982 Shards yeah. Doctor Who Daleks Easter Brilliant. box. Oh, updated for 2024, Sarah. Would you buy this? No. I would. <laughs> I'd buy that. But it works so well because it shoots his colour scheme with the orange and it looks... <laughs> just, I just love that. That's fantastic. Well um, done. Well done. This is a closer look at the original there to see that Andrew has. Yeah, I think he's updated it sensitively and uh, <laughs> with the brand new Doctor <laughs> 2 there. And a, a, yeah, a bit of symmetry. A bit of shape to yeah. end this edition of Type 40 live on. You can't just throw uh, these together, you know, gang. <laughs> absolutely not. Exterminate. And yeah, we're coming back. We're going full circle yeah. with the gags as well. <laughs> Brilliant. I love it. I like, yeah, I we like start, it. Yeah, we started with these gags. We're ending on them. Yeah. A... yeah. <laughs> and I'll be cracking them all again next year. <laughs> Quite right, too. Uh, fabulous work to Andrew Nupini, to Tony and to Little Who Girl, and of course to Warren Green too. Fabulous fan art as always here at Type 40 Live. So if you'd like us to get your work up on the view screen, you know what to do. You need to send it our way. Any method you can is, is fine by us through our social media, maybe Instagram and X at Type 40 Doctor Who. That's where you can find us. If you want to cut out the middleman, you can always just throw it up on the wall in the Type 40 Facebook group. That's where you can find various incarnations of various Time Lords. Some of these gentlemen may or may not be members, in fact, or refuse to be drawn on the exacts of that. But you never know, do you, until you join, Sarah. That's the thing. Absolutely, yeah. Could be anybody. Could be anybody in there. <laughs> well, yes, yeah, so... Uh, also, you can yeah send us your uh, details of your DeviantArt page or your website or if you've got an Instagram account or anything like that. Basically, anywhere we can see your work, we'd sincerely love to to see it and to showcase it with with you. Maybe come on come on forever for a chat with us on Type Forty Extra, something like that. I don't know. Uh, we have lots more comments. Yes, they oh, they keep coming. They keep coming for more. But uh, <laughs> Richard Brooks uh, says uh, he says give me the loving. Give me the loving. God. I thought you'd had. You'd had it. Yeah, oh, give me the love in. What, what on earth? What on earth is he talking about? Let's know in the comments. <laughs> Let's know in the comments section. Just one of the many questions that we haven't managed to get answers to during this uh, this uh, half season of Type Forty Live. The other one is um, where where is um, what happened to him? What happened to Ke what happened to Kevin? Nobody knows. <laughs> Nobody's talking about that either. You still don't um, know what happened to him. No him. idea. I think Let's he's taking his time, Eddie. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably best not to, probably best not to uh oh. yeah yes uh, so let us know in the comments section by all means uh yes yeah, shoot shooty's actually said give me the cream egg says fly highland you could be right you could be right cream right, egg, i'm cream just got a bit obsessed with cream eggs i'm afraid of late yeah <laughs> cream eggs cream eggs or tarts who knows who knows okay so next time on Type 40 Live, of course, we'll be even closer, Ian. We'll be within sniffing distance of the new season, which you're still, you're pretty adamant you're not going to watch. I wonder if, I wonder if we're going to wear him down, everybody. Let us know in the comments section. No, what do you we think of Oscar <laughs> <laughs> wearing down here, David Tears? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> because if you don't watch it, how are you going to join us again here on YouTube, Rumble and Facebook on Type 40 Live to pick the things apart here and to, sp will, to speculate some more? I will more. step back and let you guys do it. So. <laughs> Oh dear! Uh, uh, he's going to sit there with it. He's going to have a mask of Hugh Grant, and he's going to review it. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, this is is our special Easter show. We're going on a short break. It is just a short one, we promise. So be sure to keep an eye here on the YouTube channel, at the home feed, and across all podcatchers for our other content, Type 40 videos, podcasts, and extras, and whatever else may be on the way. Um, yes, Ian, thanks for your company again, mate, and happy no Easter. 
Easter. Happy Easter. Happy Easter to everyone. <laughs> Happy Easter, everybody. It's been yeah. glorious, hasn't it? Yes. Yeah, so even though you haven't come with bunny ears on, Ian, it's still you're an honorary bunny like myself. <laughs> it's almost it's I'm almost picnic weather. Either. It's mm. it's almost picnic weather, Sarah. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, so that was it. It wasn't here today, it was torrential rain right here today. Yeah, man. it was here as well, yeah. <laughs> they did weekend, it's weather. I'm just mm. being nice. Where are you going with it? It's lovely. No, I thought, well, because at, at the weekend, the clocks yeah. are going back. We all get that, yeah, extra, yeah. that extra air of lightness, yeah. yeah. Forward. They're going forward. The clocks are going forward. <laughs> I, can, I can fix that in post. The clocks are going forward at the weekend. Yeah, cut it out. Yeah, yeah. Everything will be absolutely fine. Uh, Simon, you've had those ears on the entire time, have you? Simon? No, I haven't. No, I haven't. I'm afraid. I'm afraid I was a part time bunny. I'm sorry. <laughs> bunny lightweight. I can, I can tell you exactly what I'm doing this Easter weekend. Guys, go on. Look okay. what arrived. Oh, oh wonderful! Yeah. Now yeah. that's yeah. what I call Doctor Who. I, and that's the, the the pictures really, really, really cool and crisp, and because they've redone it all and stuff. So. Yeah, yeah. You'll have a wonderful time. Yeah. Oh, the horror mini, fan rock. Oh, mini, image of the fender uh, and some mini eggs. That's my. Oh. So you know what we're doing over the Easter break. What are you doing over the Easter break? Let us know in the comments section or on our social media. Come and join our Facebook group and tell us in real time. There, we'll be back with the second half of the season before you know it with more of the very best in news views nostalgia discussions and banter please like this video particularly if you've been here this entire time like the video subscribe to the channel and i don't ask that very often consider subscribing to the channel and hit the cloister bell to get our notifications uh what else what else yeah i think that's a, about it apart from Apart from the usual, apart from the usual, really. Yes, uh, we always have the time if you have the space here at Type 40 Live. But uh, that's it for another one. Happy Easter. Bye-bye. Happy everybody. Easter. Bye. Bye. Bye.